All right. <laughs> oh my god. I have the biggest smile on my face right now. I can't stop smiling at what I'm looking at right now. You see this? This is Phoenix Rice. Rice? Wow. Put him in rice. Maybe he'll work out. This is Phoenix Wright. Rice. I keep saying it with an S. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney Trilogy. We're back. It's been a long time coming. When's the last time we touched this? I think December? It is now near the end of March. And it's time that we dove right back in for the big finale. Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm happy. A couple of things I want to go on real quick before we start. Number one. I might have to use the bathroom soon because I had a very late dinner. So, there's that. Number two. Stream started kind of late because as I was laying down saying, huh, I got this. I'm going to stream in a little bit. It's fine. I then perked back up and I said, oh shit, I forgot to make the overlay for Phoenix Wright. Oops. Didn't do that. Also, I forgot to change the schedule for Twitch, so... There's that too. But we are here. We are ready. I think it's time. I think it's time that we dive into it. <laughs> so hype. I'm hyped for this shit too. I have a big smile on my face. So, first thing I noticed while I was making the uh, overlay, apparently the title has, well, I mean, even the intro. Intro? Even the uh, title card they have for um, for the Phoenix Wright trilogy. There's this fucking... Uh, he's on the overlay. This fucking... I don't know what he is. A prosecutor or something? Dude look like he just came out of some fucking... I don't know what the fuck he came out of. Some like sci-fi ass anime or some shit. So I'm pretty sure he plays a big role. He was on the cover, right? Uh, I was told that Francesca makes a return, so she's there too. And I heard that Pearl comes back, and I'm so happy that Pearl's come back, because if she didn't come back, I was going to cry. Now, look at this. There's a there's right there, written in the words. Right there. Play this game. Do I want to do that? Of course I want to fucking do that. What else do I want to do? That's all I want to do. Oh my god. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. Right off the bat... You're pulling my heartstrings. We got Mia in all her glory. So sexy. Rest in peace. R.I.P. right there. I love her. And we got this Chad ass looking Phoenix Wright. My man looks like a Chad. I don't know who the fuck that chick is, but we're going to find out. Let's let's dive into it. I got a, the biggest smile on my face. I am so ready. I'm ready to get back into this world. I'm ready to make a fool of myself. I'm ready to show people how dumb I am. How I can't solve puzzles. And I'm ready to show people how illiterate I am. Because I can't read for shit. I'm going to take a drink of my water now. Alright. <clears throat> oh shit. It's going by itself. How did I get into this mess? Who's that? That's the real Chad. Why? Why did I do that? Who did what? What you do? Oh my god. Phoenix. No fucking way. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your own sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're, you're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about her. Stop it! Don't... Don't talk about her like that! My man's wearing a pink suit. That's where that pink outfit comes from. It... It wasn't me. I... I didn't... I didn't do it. Oh shit. Look at that. Five years earlier, <laughs> Mia Fey, second trial. Second trial? This her second trial? April 11th, 9.40 a.m. District Attorney Defendant Lobby number three. 
I can't stop smiling. Phew, it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> oh, Mr. Grossberg. Good morning. Ah, oh, Mia. Please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Gr Grossberg. I, I'm stuttering already. Mr. Grossberg, look at me. I'm relaxed. <laughs> let, let go of my my labels. <laughs> what? I thought he's honestly thought he's about to say, let go of my nipples. <laughs> like what? What's going on here? You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, I'm sorry. You said that I'm so nervous today. You and me both, Mia. You and me both. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grossberg, am at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What with your earnest request last night. Let me handle this case, you suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. I like a woman with a bit of force. I just found out yesterday about the case. I mean, what? You've already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that, you see, I mean, of course I have. Yeah, I think. Oh dear. In any case, don't let your client see you're so, so nervous. I can't even speak, I'm nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? The one that also wears that shit in Marvel's Capcom 3? Ultimate, it was great. He's like objection, you pick up evidence and you beat the shit out of them. Oh, see this guy? See him? He got the right idea. You see this dude? He knew what it was about. Ready for 2020 before 2020 even hit. Put a fucking mask on, that's what you do. Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Let's try, let's try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll, I'll give it up all I got. Yep, it'll be fine, no problem. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? You got a cold or something? <laughs> Mr. Rye? A actually, it's right. Like, the Flying Brothers? People screw it up all the time. And yes, I do have a cold. That's what the mask is for. That and the COVID. My doc said this way, I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he said. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you're truly innocent, I promise I'll save you. <laughs> Please, let go of my shirt. That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who, who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name's Mia Fay. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am. You and me both, Mia. You and me both. Well, not a full year, but it feels like it. But this time, this time, I'm gonna win. For my client, and for myself. April 11th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Oh my god, is that fucking pain? <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defendant is ready, your- uh, the defendant? The defense is ready, your honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense today is Miss Miss Mia Fay, was it? Ah, oh, yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry, I had to start it for a moment because if you look at like her, look at her artwork, like they're going for like what a one eighth profile or something like that. It looks like her other eye. <laughs> it looks like her other eye is swollen or something. I had to stop. I was like, excuse me, what's going on? <laughs> I was confused. Yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to lead the defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grossberg had a bit of an emergency. Oh my gosh, she has a bang? Hold up. She has a bang? 
I love her. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there right next to you? Yes. Well, oh my god, she was a hipster. I love her. <laughs> yes, well, uh, you, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Are you ready? Of course I am. Hey, Shark, how's it going? Welcome back, buddy. Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Oh my god, I can't get over her fucking bang. I love it. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. <laughs> After the day, I had this exactly what I need. <laughs> exactly. Fucking last night, I was supposed to come and stream Conception, right? But, I'm be honest, what really happened was that I set my alarm, went to bed, woke up at 4 o'clock, and then I said, What the fuck? I slept through two alarms? That's not right. And here's the thing, don't trust your phone alarm, because half of the time they don't even go off. They're just full of shit, to be honest. So, don't trust your phone alarm. Fuck it. And I wasn't going to skip, I wasn't going to skip Phoenix Wright Day for Conception. I love Conception, but get the fuck out of here. I want to play Phoenix Wright. I've been waiting for this shit. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. I'm having a hiccup already. Don't worry, little girl. It'll be over soon. What a fucking creep. What was that all about? He was trying to trash talk me. Now then, I'd like to proceed with my summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Shallow. Shallow? Swallow. Swallow. Shallow? I already call them Shallow. Gotta respect the dictation to play this game. Dedication? Dictation. I'm already, I can't read for shit. I'm sorry. He was a 40 year stu- 40. Wow, I'm already fucking up. Fourth year student studying Phar pharmacology. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well. Next. Uh, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Uh, that's dangerous. I'm assuming it was raining that day and there's like a big ass spark. A big wire just fucking about, really, to be honest. Imagine being in college for 40 years. I know people who've been in high school for about like seven years because they're they're a special breed, but not in the special way that you think. In the special way that they uh, just don't they, they you know <laughs> you know you know they just don't feel like doing it. I guess they said ah uh, I'll pass one of these days. I don't think they passed. I think they dropped out. Super seniors. <laughs> Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously bur burgled, bungled, bungled, bungled his getaway, they then called the police. Oh yeah, there's young Phoenix, uh-huh. He's very young. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accept... All right, can I point out, I love how everyone's younger, except for the judge. This man is timeless. What the hell? <laughs> the court accepts the photo into the record as evidence. All right. By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. I think I can. Look at that. Dude ain't getting any younger or older. <laughs> he looks so happy in the profile. He is. He's such a... Can we look at that again? He's such a fucking chipper ass guy. He currently has a cold. Uh, think he's in later games too? Oh shit. <laughs> Your reputation for Segacy? Segacy? How do you say that? Hmm. It's well earned, Your Honor. I've never seen that word a day in my life. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? I simp a simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. <laughs> and get in there, you know. Make it all nice and loose. I am a gentleman, if you will. 
Is he hitting her? I feel like he's kind of hitting on her at the same time. Also, is his, like, hairdo supposed to be, like, his penis? Because it's kind of weird. Um, what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. <clears throat> A perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please say you know at least this much. I, I'm sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Oh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Too much info, bro. <laughs> All the pain bros were- wait. All the pain bro- <gasps> That's a different dude! I didn't know that! Oh my god! You said Pain Brothers fucking... I was like, Pain Brothers? No wonder he looks super... Who the fuck? Dahlia Harthorn. Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dating the victim, Doug... What? First of all, oh my god, she's beautiful. Right? She's giving me hella Chidori from Persona 3 vibes. I love it. Second of all, Phoenix, you're going out with a bitch named Dahlia. Doesn't... A little suspect? Um, I mean, come on. Come on. A little bit of suspect? I mean... Listen. Her name's Dahlia. She got a pretty face. A little too pretty. Too pretty. Right? I don't... I think I found the murderer. Right off the bat. I love her so much. Now see here. The details of the case are filed under the court, uh, court record. I know that, I'm just looking at it right now. But you knew that already, didn't you? Of course I did. Of course I did. Look at this. Of course I did. Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by pressing the R1 button. 6-6? Six, six? What you mean? What do you mean by that? Or is that like a face? Is that emoji face? Might be an emoji face, I'm not sure. All the weapons we need can be found in court records. Take good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. I gotta stay calm. I can't let the prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just pressed the R1 button, right? Now then, will the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? <laughs> Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Cause of death. See, cause of death was a fatal electric shock. Oh well. There you go. Electrocution, Your Honor. It's a face. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Tip to make them cool again, yep. That was my second guess. That's why I looked at it. I was like, hmm, is that is that a sign, a signal? What you giving me? According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock, in the other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer that you'll come the answer will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there's one more vital issue. What's that? Why? Motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? Cause bitch, now we got bad blood. What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. Hmm, <laughs> that Winston Payne for you. He's one smooth operator, if you catch my drift. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing. Oh, so he's, he's one of those people. Gotcha. He's one of those people that's like, <laughs> here's my Smurf account. All 50 of them. Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time, I would like to see some supporting evidence. Oh, that's new. Hey, how we doing this? What we doing? Now, one thing I'm still kind of scared of. Oh, look at these save files. Oh my God, 2020. Farewell, my turnabout. I just want to see what was the last. What was the last one that we did? All of it was. All of it was on the 28th. That was the last time we played this game before the new year. Oh my god! Look at that. 
Look at that. Supporting evidence. <laughs> evidence. Oh, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove into old Greybeard's face. Y yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Um, Mr. Grossberg. Try to set a better example for the young lady. <laughs> Been waiting patiently. Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence with R1 button, so be sure to go all over it. Now then, let's see what you got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Of course, it was this young, strapping, beautiful lady. Look at her, she's beautiful, oh my god. I'm gonna feel so heartbroken that she's the murderer. But here you go. The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on that, at least. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. <laughs> His name is Swallow. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to stop there for a moment. His name is Swallow. <laughs> Tell me he swallows? That's kind of weird, but okay. <laughs> Should have swallowed. <laughs> Clearly, she was some part to play in this story. Hmm. Ah, uh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Don't think about it too much. I'm not sure. Listen, you tell me he swallows. Maybe someone else has the pants in the relationship. That's all I'm saying. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please, call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself. Well, Miss Faye, it's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. Right? Uh, the court calls Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My, my name's Mr. Wright. Phoenix Wright, sir. My job is, uh, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no. He means what, what do you do before you were arrested? Oh, uh, achoo! I was at a university student. Mr. Wright? You understand that you are suspecting the death of your fellow student, Doug. But, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you, I was... <laughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his coal to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Listen, of course that's his voice. <laughs> of course that's his voice. He's young. You know, puberty is a bitch. Well then, Mr. Wright. Please tell us about the relationship, your relations to the victim. Mm -hmm, yes. Right away, your honor. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh boy. Oh um, my. I admit I was there. But I'm not the killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never ever talked to that stuck up British wannabe. Voice cracks at 21? <laughs> my voice cracks still. My voice still cracked. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Right. Like I said, I'm not the killer. Phew. It looks like the judge understands. <clears throat> You're behaving naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right. And it's the defense duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine... I, wow, I said that all fucked up. Let me try that again. The purpose is to determine if a witness testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statement will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. 
Even if he is your client, in court, all eyes must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see? What does he mean by that? And he's saying that testimony just now. That there was a lie? A contradiction? I like how Mia forgot everything about being a lawyer. Hey, she says she got traumatized. I I mean, I damn, I agree with that. I'd be like, fuck it. I don't want to hear nothing about none of this no more. Now then, your cross-examination, if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright. Tell me you haven't been lying. Well, I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> you wouldn't do that to me, would you? Mia, I would never hurt you. I would never lie to you. Alright, let's see. Oh boy. Alright. I finally get to have a good look. Oh, I can't even examine the evidence yet. Oh, there we go. I have to check this. Never mind. Umbrella, sparks, any other little nuances and details I can pull out here? I want to say... Here's the thing. There's an umbrella there and stuff. I want to say it was on a rainy day, but I see no rain. I see no rain, no water, no puddles, no nothing. Right? Proof of my profession. The first and last time I wore it was a year ago. Oh my god. I gotta have an option to just show it. Show it in front of someone's face. Oh, he kind of want the sweater. I know, right? See, he's wearing pink. That's a man's color. All right, let's see. My superior. My client. Third year art. Wait, art student? Phoenix, what the fuck, man? Come on! Victim was fourth year. From logical student. Okay. Dated the victim. Up until eight months ago. Okay. Alright. 49? How old is she? She's 20? 22? 21? Damn. He's 61? What? Marvin! How old are you? <laughs> the fuck? Alright. I admit I was there. But I'm not the killer. I did find his body. I, hardly didn't, I didn't even look at the fucking... I'm sorry. I didn't even look at this. Date and time. 4-9. 3 p.m. Cause of death. Got it. 3 p.m. Never talked to the stuck-up British wannabe. Phoenix? Phoenix. If you never talk to him, how do you even know that he's a stuck-up wannabe? Friend went to col college... For Halloween ones? Oh my god. He went to college Phoenix for Halloween ones. My bad. I misread that. Let me try it again. Your friend went as Phoenix from college for Halloween. Got it. I fucked that up. My bad. <laughs> Alright. Mr. Wright, you stated in your following testimony, I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him... Then how, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Oh shit. Achoo! <laughs> well, Mr. Wright? Uh, no! It wasn't me! I'm not the killer, I swear! Mr. Wright, I'll give you the opportunity to revise your testimony. Now, now it is that you knew- wait, what? Now? I'm saying now. My bad. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yeah, yeah, well... Uh... He was always walking around with the huge U Union Jack on the back of his shirt. It was weird as fuck. Okay. So, tell me more about that. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean? Yeah, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That's why... That's why I figured he must love British stuff, you see? It's true. Cross my heart and hope to die. I swear I didn't do it. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. Hmm. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Y yes Your Honor. What is it? What is it now? Who is this person anyways? This Union Jack fellow. I have no fucking idea. The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Okay, thank you. Oh, I see. 
So you mean like the Star and Stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this? Hmm, Mia, there's a contradiction here. Mr. Grossberg. Quickly now, show the boy what you mean. Show him that you mean business. With evidence! Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, do you think you can manage this on your own? I got this. I got this. I got this. All right, calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Sit down. Sit down. Why are you standing? Sit down. I got it. <laughs> I said I fucking got it. <laughs> Meanwhile, no one's talking to her. I was in the courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. <clears throat> you mustn't try to bite off more than you can chew. Coming from you, that's very rich. I'm fine. I know what I'm doing. Remember, you can always press him to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to strike, uh, strike, when you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present some definite, uh, definite proof. Okay, Mia. One more time, from the very beginning of his testimony. Got it. All right, so, he said he had the flag on his back. This, I see no flag. You see a flag? I don't see no flag. He's lying. He's lying. Stop lying to me. Why are you lying? But I'm not the killer. I wish there was, I wish they at least made it so I can like go back, you know, just to head to the last statement by just pressing to the left here, but you know, can't do that. Always walking around with a big Union Jack. All right. Okay. That's what you say. That's what you're saying. I think you're lying. Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Fay, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute. He's wearing a leather jacket. The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case... Then you wouldn't know that, would you? You have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath the jacket. Oh, shit. Mr. Wright, have you been lying to me? Oh, uh, please forgive me. Mia, you've made our client cry. <laughs> Let him, that pee on it, wait, what? Let him. Let him. The pee on his jacket doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lie for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the crime scene. Huh. Oh no, did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright... You seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I... Oh, uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-counter brand? Called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds. Pretty good. Hey, wait a second. How'd you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does that even have anything to do with this case? Mr. Wright? Shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. Wh what's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X! Hold on! How are you a fan of a medicine? How are you a fan of a medicine? How does that work? Okay, that's weird. <laughs> yes, but even I got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt that as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. <laughs> what? 
Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped by Mr. Wright, and hid in his hand. His purpose in doing so. Wait, what? His purpose in doing. So, wait, what? I gotta re. I gotta reread that. I'm having a stroke. His purpose in doing so can only be, have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Oh shit. You can't do that. That's bad. Order. Order in the court. Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Photo number two. Look at this photograph. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Like my achy break at heart? Yes. It ceased functioning when a large wave of electric electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation of, the, of this? For this? You know? Uh. This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Why are you... Keep it to yourself. If you gotta leave the room, leave the room. <laughs> well, the truth is, I went because he called me. And I couldn't resist him. Just look how sexy he is. Can you resist him? I can't. He was in the pharma, uh, pharma I can't, can't say that fucking word. Pharmacology department. So we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building for some, you know, some action. We talked for a bit, and then at three o'clock we split up, split up, split up. I can't say the word, I can't speak, I'm sick, leave me alone. Then later, when I went back, I found him laying there. It was kinda hot, but then he was dead, so it was kinda weird. I've been taking cold killer eggs for the last two or three days now, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. <laughs> I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Hmm. Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright. Don't tell any more lies. All right, Mr. Wright. Let's do it. The truth is, I went because you called me. So I agreed to meet at him. Why did you agree? What what was the plan? What was the plan? Tell me this. Dude just lying in court. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah. And we were both there right on time. Hmm. You said the victim was in the pharmaceutical pharmace I'm just gonna say pharmaceutical, it's easier for me to say that. Pharmaceutical department, correct? Yeah. He was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. I mean, like hella sus, like mad scientist vibes. He had a whole laboratory and everything. Like literally, like, like Dr. Draken, it was weird. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that ran on high voltage electricity. Maybe that's why he died. Oh, how fascinating. I just made the judge's voice crack because mine did. Oh, oh, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. Too bad he's dead now. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details. About front. Forget about it. Uh, how about timing of the meeting? Tell me more about the department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmaceutical department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right! And they sure look dangerous. Like, youch. Like I shocked the shit out of myself one time, it, it really fucking hurt. They use non-standard voltage, so there's some high-voltage cables everywhere. I mean, like, everywhere. Like, I think one of them shocked my dick. It felt a little... it, it kind of felt good. But don't tell anybody I said that. High voltage cables? Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. It was some freaky deaky shit. I swear, they're probably like into some BDSM or some shit for all that electricity. Either that or they like Pikachu, I'm not sure. The high voltage cables ran over around the roof. 
overhead and around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. Alright, talked for a bit, then we split up. Why'd you split up? Wait, you split up at three. That's time of death. Okay, tell me more about that. So what was it you were talking about? You know... <laughs> Uh, maybe we shouldn't hang maybe we should hang out sometime and by that I mean like you know the fact that my girlfriend was going out with him so we kind of thought of like a threesome thing you know a little of interest I'm still young hang out sometime I wish that was true fucking hang out sometime you didn't like the dude went later went back I found him laying there taking him for two or three months. Okay, what did you do when you found him? You just peace out? You ran? What'd you do? So you say you went back. Um, yeah. That's when I found the body. Yes. But why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Hmm. I thought maybe we could make up. I mean, he is pretty sexy. What the fuck? <laughs> I love how everyone's just like, come on. Yeah, even I don't believe my lie. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one's buying this. I've been taking cold killer eggs for fucking days. I'm sick of shit. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. But I lost my bottle around lunchtime. Who was at lunch with you? On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. Now answer the damn question. I always ate with Dolly. Just the two of us. Dolly homemade lunches are just the greatest. I mean the greatest. Like, delicious. Like, I'm pretty sure she kind of put some crack in it so that I wouldn't leave her. Her mini omelets are magically delicious. Her mini omelets, huh? Okay. All right, Phoenix. Okay. Youch! Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm so sorry. This felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. <laughs> I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately this time, uh, time of his death. Okay, hold up. <laughs> Let me actually save, because I don't want to fucking have to do shit all over again. I'm pretty sure this game still doesn't have checkpoints. And then the defense returned to the scene of the crime un- for a Wait, what? Hold up. And then the defendant returned to the scene of the crime for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What? What do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Huh? However, there was one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. Hold up. Can I can I have like a moment? I want to have a moment here. So, I guess maybe the judge just became senile in old in old age, because young Phoenix Rock here, young Phoenix right here, he's like, your testimony can't be trusted. Meanwhile, in the future, with all of our fucking uh fucking court dates that we had this guy's believing it believing the fucking uh believing the most sus people over and over again just like oh yeah no man you got it that makes sense i get it why don't you tell me a couple more lies especially people who come back on the stand after lying in court in previous trials and he still trusts them I think, I think the judge just hate Phoenix. I think he just hates him. He just hates him. It's like a radar. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? 
I don't believe the murder weapon has been provided yet, correct? Well, that is... You're correct, Your Honor. It's a wonder this dude's a judge. Exactly. So, how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? Did he just swallow a bunch of pills? Like, come on, it has to be something simple. If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I should just come out of this mess smelling- Smelling? Smelling like a rose. Okay, there we go. I, I had to wait a moment. I'm like, smelling? What, where are you getting at with this? Hmm. I'll establish the method. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Faye. I believe that there were... There's... Uh, I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. <laughs> quite, the br quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm. Of course I know that. Actually, I totally forgot about that shit. Now then, Miss Faye. Let's see what you got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Okay, really? Come on, we're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. I'm not even... Which crime photo is it? This one? Here you go. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. In the picture, the sparks are lightened. As for the cause of death, I say this picture captures it quite well. What? How? It's impossible. But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Are you kidding me? The sparks are literally touching his back. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly is the photo? And the photo is the murder weapon. It's right here. You see this? Right here? Right there? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... That's... What is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe. Your Honor? Remember the testimony we've heard? The machines the pharmaceutical students use in their experiments required high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cables. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high voltage cable. However, I want you to take a look at what of what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as the murder weapon was the defendant. Hmm. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish Mr. Wright was the murderer. You, you don't. Well, you don't. You do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at this crime scene photo. Look at this photograph. As you see, the victim's wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Isn't leather like a good insulator? Am I wrong about that? Well, I guess he is wearing it, so it probably would still pass through, but isn't leather like... Electricity doesn't travel through that, does it? Yeah, but they did say it was high voltage, so it could, like, you know, burn through, I guess, right? And it seemed to have been raining recently, so... That would help it in its case. Ugh, you mean... Yes, it was quite clear imprint. It was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket, the palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left the print like this. Intention of murder. He squarely pushed the victim towards the several severed electrical cable. I mean, it is electrical wires. Yeah, exactly. Order, order. That's enough. I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. 
Stick a fork in us. We're done. Mr. Grossberg. My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. I knew the boy was guilty the first time I saw him. What a fucking pathetic loser. No, you're wrong. Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! I put my gavel down. Gavel? 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 How do you pronounce it? Gavel? Right? I put it down. My decision is final. At this time, I am prepared to render a victim. A uh, render? Render a vict. A victim. Wow. A verdict. I completely forgot the word. Render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Fay? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? Huh? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something, now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But, uh, but I can't. I can't. I love her. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss mm. mm. Faye. His voice just changes. He's like, well then. No matter what you have to say, I believe, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. <coughs> wait, wait a minute! Mr. Wright, your voice changed back. I, I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further. <coughs> I... I did it. I admit it! I pushed him! It was my fault. My fault that Doug Swallow is dead. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey! It's none of your business. I'm telling you for your own sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Force push! Why is he sweating? Why is that man sweating? What did you just say? Was that the truth? Yeah, yeah. I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. <laughs> please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I believe in you! Oh. Um, thank you? I still can't believe it. You really did push the victim. Mm, it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake! What the fuck? Alright. Hold up. Hold up. What? <laughs> I'm guessing they relocalized this? Because I'm pretty sure by the time this game came out, the Harlem Shake didn't even exist. <laughs> he said, they're doing the Harlem Shake! <laughs> That's that guy. He was talking bad about Dolly. Talking all kinds of shit. So then I heard this voice in my head, right? It was like... It was like real sinister and shit. Like, I think it was some dude and he went like, no, I think, but I think it was like a little girl or something. And she said, do it. <laughs> I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Propatine was added again. She striked again before she was even conceived. The force fucking told him. At the moment, I heard some, wow, why did I lose the voice? My bad. At the moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he, he was just lying there, 
dead. Someone actually wrote that exactly, right? Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock. But not the electric shock, the shock of being pushed. He's like, ugh, how dare you? And then he died, he couldn't handle it. At that, and that, as they say, is that. It is what it is. A simple explanation, indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had began had been blah, 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 had began to fall. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. Uh, but when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed that. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Mm, Miss Fay. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any specific fact, any specific, any new facts, fucking, I'm just adding words at this point. <laughs> I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he's innocent, put your mask back on. Put your mask back on, Phoenix. You're giving everybody corona. Stop it. If he's innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Alright. Let's see. Now, was the broken watch added to the... No, it wasn't. Okay. Well, let me see this real quick. Cold killer. Guys. Guys. Guys, you see what I see right now? Do you see what I see? I see something. I see something that makes no sense. If time of death was at three, why does his watch say, why does his watch say fucking nine? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Listen. It said, I'm looking at it, right? That says nine. Is it upside down? My bad, it's upside down. Oops. I'm sorry, take that back. Take that back. It's upside down. It's upside down. Never mind. I'm sorry. Listen. He wore his watch upside down. He's a freak. He's a loser. Hey, listen, you stop this. Listen. <laughs> mm. Just going over it, just going over it. All right. Guy was talking bad about Dolly. What do you say about Dolly? Oh, I pressed the wrong button. What do you say about Dolly? I said it earlier, man. I said it earlier. I said, watch me make a fool of myself. And I made a fool of myself. I promise. No clickbait here. So what kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Like, I mean like a bad girl. Like, hmm. That's why I like her so much. Um. Is that all? Yep. Simp. Come on! That, like, listen, I don't go out my way to call people simps, but that's the biggest simp move I've ever seen in my life. Come on! It ain't that easy. It's not that easy. It's not that easy, right? Come on. Well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors. Please don't make this harder for me than it, ha than it already is. Anyways, after he said that, I just... I just heard this voice in my head. It was like a little girl. And it said, do it. <laughs> I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when 
That's when I lost my temper and I flew into a furious frenzy. <laughs> I love the sound of the slap sound. It's just like, pow, right? And he's just on the ground. <laughs> it's kind of goofy. I just gave him a light, gentle shove. I mean, it wasn't that hard. And when you did that, there was no there was no severed cable anywhere to be seen. Oh my fucking god, virus protection, get out of my fucking face. Stop it. <laughs> You're not needed at this time. Right. There was nothing like that at all. But it is possible that you merely overlooked it. Well, I guess it is possible. What are you doing? Don't let the guy steamroll over you like that. Come on. I believe that I believe what important here is that the moment is the moment that the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony witness. At the moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. I think it I I couldn't really make it out, but I I could have sworn I heard help. This girl is killing me. I think that's what it sounded like anyways. It was kind of I was kind of far away. Why'd it take you so long to clip? Because Twitch is fucking goofy. A loud noise. And what would you say the loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure. But it was like really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it. I wonder, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You, you're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm trying on some dangerous ground here. Give me more detail. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Hmm, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Like, I mean, it went snap, then crackle. I think I heard a pop. I'm not sure. <clears throat> could it, could it have been? Yes, yes, what could it have been? Tell me. When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it, and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? Did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella, cheap and frail. Kind of like him. Oh, wow. I read that. I read that not knowing that was just, I was kind of ad-libbing that one, to be honest. I didn't know I actually said that. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. But I kind of wanted to look cool to him, so I just stood in the rain. You know, like one of those anime characters? Hmm. Miss Faye, what do you think? There's something important in that testimony just now. Hmm? Well, of course it's important. Of course it's not important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, the cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want the official. I want the- what? I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Uh, how perfect- how perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. <laughs> Crack, snackle, and pop. Crack, snackle? Did I just say snackle? Oh my god. The court agrees to the defendant's request. Witness, please add the bit about the about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. After I showed him, he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. A little while after that, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, dead. Like what a bitch! I only pushed him. Tell me how dead he was. At this this time, honestly, I don't even think that will help me at all. But I just wanna, I just want to see the reaction. At this time, did you see any see anything else at the scene of the crime? <coughs> <coughs> no, no, nobody. Jeez, could that stupid cause possibly sound any phonier? Hmm. In that case, it's very hard to believe someone else could have been murdered. Unless we can find something that shows innocent from testimony, my dear. I'm afraid the judge will make his final decision with no remorse whatsoever. Y yes, sir. Right now, I need more info. The info will help me turn to blah, 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 blah. Tell me how dead he was exactly, right? 
Listen, I need every detail possible. Alright. Oh, let me move my mouse from that. I don't like that. Oh my god. <laughs> I have like a really fucked up mouse for my PC, so when I sit it down without like flipping it over, it literally drags by itself. Like it drifts. It drifted all the way to the fucking exit button. <laughs> so let's not have that there, right? Just in case something happens. So I went back, but he was just lying there. Oh shit, I did not. I didn't even know that I skipped it. Alright. Phoenix. Phoenix. Phoenix, my boy. Phoenix, my boy. He told me oh wait. Okay, that is a broken umbrella there. Do you say like it snapped in half or a while after left started to get wait what? I thought I showed them fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. Did you say like snapped in half? <laughs> Could you imagine? Oh my god, exactly. I would fucking lose my mind. So, Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella. You certain of this? Yeah. It was right there under him. Actually. Oh my bad, I my bad. We're done with serious Phoenix. Actually, if it hadn't been under him, I was planning on borrowing it for myself. The umbrella, you mean? Well, yeah, you see, I was wearing this sweater here. Dolly stayed up all night making it for me. I mean, like, all night. Like, I kind of think, like, it's kind of crazy, to be honest. Like, I think she might be a psychopath. She, like, she really got, like, no sleep at all. Kind of just, like, sitting in the corner making it, saying, I love Phoenix, you'll never leave me forever and ever. I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. <sighs> My stomach has to be used to your personal soccer ball, Mia. Huh? I'm so sorry. Did she... she kick his stomach? <laughs> he committed assault and was planning on theft. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Pretty cool, Phoenix. Continue with your testimony. Alright. So he said it was un... he said it was under him. Just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. Just wanted to make sure. So it's this photo, right? Okay, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on! If I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's argument earlier. What? What do you mean by that? Take another look at this crime scene photo. Look at this photograph! According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is somehow near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrocution pole. You're, you're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell, in other words. After he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! Order! Order, I say! The victim, he moved. Mr. Payne! The umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want it present as evidence- I want it presented as evidence immediately. Umbrella added to the court record. Owned by the victim, found broken near an electrical pole of the crime scene. It's a white umbrella? Oh, I thought it had- I thought it was like maybe red or something. But the umbrella could have simply been blown, uh, blown by, blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. <laughs> but I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial. But as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No! no! Music gets me every time. <laughs> me too. I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Phoenix's testimony is added to the court records. Well done, Mia! <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. 
young judge is so much better exactly like i'm pretty sure he grew senile it was foolish to think i could establish guilt through cross-examination alone i'm afraid i don't follow what you're saying let me guess you have another witness exactly this witness testimony will be in convert and con well wow Incontrover uh, incontrovertible I can't say the fucking word you know what I mean incontrovertible uh, blah, blah, blah. well who's this witness Miss Dahlia Hawthorne Dahlia Hawthorne you don't mean Dolly yes Dolly I do your honor the defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing that's right she was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place what? Like Nani the fuck? I'm sorry to break your ba break the bad news to you, my dear. I don't know why I made his voice deeper. Oh my god. Move that bang. Bad news? You can be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia! What do you mean? I think this is a good point for us to stop. Court will now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we'll listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. All right. April 11th, 1152 AM, District of Court, Defense, District, District Court, Defense, Lobby number three. Miss Fay, I'm sorry. About what happened back there, hi. It's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mister Right. Yeah. So I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. Uh, but, but the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know it. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She's the love of my life. That's why. The love of your life? Oh, you're a fucking simp! <laughs> I just- I just love the image in my head of Mia just looking at him, just like- Just like, head in her hand- hand in her head. Oh god, I can't even see the word. Hands in her head. Like that. Head in her hands. Just going like, oh my fucking god, I can't believe this guy. He's a fucking simp! Would you mind telling me more about- Would you mind tell- I'm giving Mia Phoenix's voice, my bad. Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Oh my god, look at this Chad motherfucker! Phoenix! You are such a Chad and kind of buff, actually, too. Like- Kind of got some muscle on him, I'm not gonna lie. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. <laughs> you know, it's that side game, baby, that side hustle. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. Huh? She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. <laughs> she had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. I tried to give her a voice. I'm, I'm, I'm not that good. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling, this, <clears throat> this darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle. Uh, wait, I gave I gave me his voice again. It certainly is it certainly is a little bottle. It makes me so happy. I show I show it to everyone I meet. Phoenix. 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 Oh my fucking god! You're an idiot, fucking moron, dude. Come on. You got played from day one! It's dangerous to go alone, take this, exactly. No, 
That's what... <laughs> See, what Phoenix thought is that she said, it's dangerous to go alone, Phoenix, take this. What she really meant is, yo, Phoenix, this shit is dangerous for me to have. I can't go alone with this. Take this. God damn. Oh, it can't be that easy, Phoenix. Oh my God. That's obviously something super stolen. God. What a fucking idiot. Makes me happy. Show it to everyone. I want to share my happiness with the whole world the whole wide world a small bottle necklace given to right on the day they met it shows it to everyone anyways so after that you and Miss Hawthorne started dating yeah well she's so shy every time I see her she's always says the same thing to me please give it back now <laughs> what the f you're a fucking idiot what a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. It's a wonder the dude became a lawyer three years ago. By the way, oh, by the way, Mr. Wright. The day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was. But how'd you know that? This happened on August 27th, right, right here in the courthouse. What's this, a newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse. M murder What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. I do believe there's some connection between these two cases, am I correct? Oh my god, it's not that easy, Phoenix. It's not that easy. Very little information has been disclosed at this time since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Oh, it's not that easy! Come on, Phoenix! I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. Uh, I need to finish this myself. Oh, yes, but I'm afraid what you, what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to help. Uh, they'll be of help to you, Mia. Well, looks like recess is about over. We better all get moving. <laughs> I guess so. The recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. Really? It seems shorter. To be continued. Fuck off. <laughs> I guess it's- I guess it is a checkpoint, but like, come on. Oh my god. April 11th, 12- 12-13pm, uh, 12, District Court, courtroom number 2. We're now sitting opposite directions, I think. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Payne, please call your witness. This next person is someone who witnessed the crime as it happened. The prosecution calls Miss Dahlia Hawthorne to the stand. Oh my God, you're too fucking beautiful. You have to stop. Stop, there's butterflies. What's with this stiff silence? Come on. Oh my, I just want, I just want like a fucking picture, just like a piece, a piece of artwork or something. And through the years, it's Mia's career, right? And every time something stupid happens with the guys, she's just holding her head, just going, Oh my God, I'm surrounded by fucking simps. In my long career, in my long career as a judge, I have been deceived by many witnesses. It's my job to doubt, to take no one at their word. But in your case, I must admit that your radiant, uh, that you radiant a glow of complete sin senior, senior. She's beautiful. Look at her. I can't believe he actually said that. Speak! <laughs> He's standing there. What are you doing? 
<laughs> simps simps everywhere oh come on now witness could you please state your full name uh um don't worry sweet excuse me don't worry sweetie there's no need to be nervous if anyone says anything rude you can be assured i'll cut them right oh my god they are fucking simps and i will bash them with my gavel oh my fucking what i love how they look straight at me when they said that <laughs> um thank you for calming my nerves you are all so nice i almost feel right at home not at all it was nothing if we may move on what's your full name and occupation my name is dahlia hawthorne i'm a junior in literature at ivy university i just want to say it's an honor for me to be here in all your noble presence excuse me what the fuck just happened <laughs> i'm not sure if that was the game or if that was my house i think someone just turned on a blender That was like super loud. <laughs> the honor is all mine. No, the honor is mine. Well, we know whose milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. And damn right, it's better than mine. Um, sir? Is there something I can help you with? You just go on and say whatever's on your mind. I'm sure that there must be some kind of mistake. Feeny wouldn't kill anyone I just know it Feeny fucking Feeny it's not that easy yes yes I see why you say that she's gonna be a tough witness it only took her 12 seconds to wrap them around her little finger now then please proceed with your testimony let's hear about what the witness on that day of the incident <laughs> let's hear about what you witnessed on the day of the incident I'm just... Oh my fucking god. I had been planning to go back to Feeny's place after class was over. Feeny and Dougie... Dougie? Dougie. Hey, show me how to Dougie. Hey. <laughs> they were talking behind the building. Then suddenly, Dougie got a wobbly and just collapsed. Got all wobbly. Then when Feeny noticed that I was there, I went to go and find some other students and they called the authorities. That's a very weird testimony, but okay. I don't know what to say. According to you, Miss Hawthorne, the defendant didn't do anything wrong. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. Young lady. As old as I am, even I recall how hot the fumes of young passion can burn. Nevertheless, it's my job to discover the truth. Please, tell us the truth. But, but I, I would never. Oh my. That's more than enough, witness. I won't allow this to continue. What do you mean by that? Please, just let me proceed with my cross-examination, your honor. I, for one, don't plan to win my case on a bunch of paper-thin lies. <laughs> you haven't changed a bit, Mia Fey. Bitch. What's this? So you two are acquainted? Oh, now I'm all hot and bothered. Yes. We've met before. Once. What the hell is going on outside my room? Right? That was weird. <laughs> People were making noise. Yes, we met before. Once. <laughs> Am I good? I'm fine. <laughs> I just heard like some noise in the background. I'm like, what the fuck's going on back there? In any case, Miss Fay, the floor is all yours. It's good to see you again, Madam Fay. Madam, I'm no one's grandma yet, girl. Damn. All right, what's your witness? I had been planning to go back to... Oh, wait, no, we, we saw this already. Okay. 
Phoenix and Doug, they were talking behind the building. What were they talking about? Tell me. Tell me. What you hear? What you hear? Tell me what you hear. So, who's this Dougie person? Oh, I'm sorry. Doug Swallow. We were dating until about eight months ago. So, what were uh, Dougie, <clears throat> Mr. Swallow and Mr. Wright talking about? How can you be so mean? Oh my god, don't make her cry. I would never, I would never eavesdrop. I wasn't raised to be so rude and unrefined. That's right, Miss Faye. Don't drag the witness down to your level. Why am I being, de why am I being demonized here? Please go on, what you see next? Then suddenly Dougie got all wobbly. He went weeble wobble, but he fell down. <laughs> Are you saying that the victim just collapsed on his own? Yes. In other words, the defendant never touched the victim, is that right? I was watching the whole time. Feeney never did a thing to Dougie. If I, if I press her for no good reason, I just know the judge will be angry with me. So what should I do about her testimony now? Ooh. What do you say in your thing? Victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound when this happened. Hmm. Victim stopped at the time of death. Victim watch stopped at the time of death. Took place behind the alley building. Death. There's no contradiction yet. I don't think there's no contradiction yet. I'll leave it alone for now. Mm. As far as her statement works in our favor for now, I'll hold off on looking into any deeper until that's necessary. Very well, young lady. Please go on with your testimony. That's when Feeney noticed I was there. He didn't tell me that. What did Mr. Wright say when he saw you? I'm sorry. I was so flustered that I... I really don't remember. Please forgive me. You don't remember? Well, that's common enough. Sometimes I can't recall a sentence I passed only a minute prior. Please, someone, anyone, stop him before he gets hurt. By me? <laughs> stop it before I kill the judge. No, for real, stop it. No, stop, like, stop, no, stop, stop, I'm not playing, you're freaking me out. <laughs> Went to go find some other students. All right, who'd you find? When you say students, do you mean students from the pharmacological, uh, pharmacological, wow, pharmaceutical department? Yes, they're all very fond of their drugs. I mean, like, they were fucking on cloud nine. <laughs> Please try to stay on topic. So to find some pharma, uh, pharma da, 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 students, you went to the lab, correct? That's what I was planning to do, but in the end, I wound up, I wound up not going. A group of about 10 research students came running out of the building entrance. Somehow, they all seemed to know what was going on. The students knew what was going on? Tell me, how, why? How could the students have known what was going on? Well, I don't know for sure that they knew, uh, <laughs> I don't know for sure that they knew what had happened. It just, they all seemed kind of excited about something. Hmm. Doesn't look like I'm going to get any more information about the students. So did the students call the police? Yes. It w I was just so... I was so panicked. Hmm. Yes. Well. Anyone would have been, my dear. That girl. She's telling a super obvious lie and she knows it. She's just pretending to protect Mr. Wright. She's protecting that fucking bottle. Yes. That's got to be it. Way to go, Mia. Okay, that means I'm gonna have to dig deep to find contradiction on this one. Okay, I've been planning on going back to fin- Okay, alright, 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 okay. Just for safety, let me press this statement and then I'll do what I think I can do. Now, unless I'm mistaken, Feeney, I mean Mr. Wright, is in the art department. If that's the case, then what were they doing by the pharma pharmaceutical building? Well, I'm in the literature department. I'm studying Japanese Sinryu poetry. 
Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> it's so humorous, yet... It's uh, uh, strategic... I uh, can't even see the fucking word. It's strategical. Style of haiku, yes. Nothing left to do when a man reaches this age. Sleep in his best friend. Wait, what? Sleep in his best friend? My best. Sleep, sleep in his best friend. Hey, man. You know, age and experience. <laughs> sleep, sleep is his best friend. That's supposed to be poetry? Sounds more like a midlife crisis. For me, to get to the art department, I have to walk through the back area. Oh, yes. That makes sense. When I went to enter the courthouse, I always walked through the front doors. How else would you enter? Teleportation? Alright. Got all wobbly. Notice I was there. He suddenly went all wibble wobble. He went wiggle wiggle wiggle. Alright. Never touch the victim. Hmm. Alright. Let's see what we got. We need evidence for this. Maybe profiles. My client, third year. Victim, fourth year. Student. All right. Just making sure. Mm-hmm. Grabs a place behind it. I don't think there's nothing really here to help us with that. Found clutch in the victim's hand, covered in Phoenix Wright's fingerprints. How would he get that? Right. Owned by the victim, found broken near electrical pole. This would help too, to show that something happened. There's also Phoenix's testimony. All right, and then these two won't help at all. All right. Joe, contradiction. Feeble lies are not very becoming, Miss Hawthorne. So let's drop them, shall we? What? What? I I would never. Don't make her cry. How dare you? Miss Faye, I will now allow you to badger this witness. I believe the defense is in, engaged in a fishing expedition. That is, uh, she has no supporting... I love how Mia's like, watch what you say. Watch what you, I will leap over this fucking counter. Please don't glare at me like that, I'm just doing my job. Now then, Miss Hawthorne. The defendant's palm print was found on Mr. Swallow's leather jacket. It has already been shown that Mr. Wright did, in fact, push the victim. What? What? There's no need to try to cover for the defendant. Stare intensifies. <laughs> it would be much better if you came out and told us the whole truth. Hmm. There's nothing to worry about, young lady. Just tell us everything that you saw. Yes, Your Honor. I will, if you don't mind. I'd like to revise my testimony. Looks like we're finally getting somewhere. Um, actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. Then why'd you put it? Why'd you put it in your fucking stink? You didn't see it? Well, I saw the moment when Dougie fell to the ground. At, a t at that time, there was only the two of them at the scene. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and the victim, Doug Swallow. Yes, that's right. It didn't look like they were fighting. I didn't hear anything unusual either. What did you hear? So then, what did it look like they were doing to you? I think they were trying to fuck each other. <laughs> like they got real close. I thought they were having a nice friendly afternoon conversation. Oh, give me a break! <laughs> That's why I really wasn't watching them all that closely. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? No, nothing at all, Mr. Judge. Oh, I like the sound of that, Mr. Judge. I like the sound of that. You're fu- That's some freaky shit. Now then, please proceed with my- with your testimony. I went to go find- I went to go find some other students, and they called authority- Okay, alright. Didn't look like they were fighting, and I didn't hear anything either. They actually did not see the moment it happened. Did not look like they were fighting. 
Fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound. One by the victim. If I'm broken. Yeah, well, she didn't see... She didn't see the moment it happened, so... Okay. Uh... Victim watched the time of death. Time took place behind it. Caused death. Get electric shock. I don't think this would help. At right now, at this point in time. Hmm. And I don't think this would help either. Alright. She says she did not see the moment it happened. Well, obviously, these two statements need something, right? One of them are the contradiction. Didn't hear anything unusual. She said she left to get people, but all right, I'm just gonna just gonna go on a whim here, right? Go on a whim here. She said she didn't hear anything unusual. You can hear it's a loud sound when it happened. All right, just making sure, because if you said you ran away, maybe she could have. If she, if she said she ran away, she could have been too far away to hear the noise, right? Especially if she left before he got pushed over, but, you know. You say you didn't hear anything unusual? Yes. That's why I was very relaxed, looking at the scenery around me. Dolly, it's not that easy. That's nice, but I find that a little odd. I have here the testimony of your boyfriend, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And he clearly testified to the effect that when he pushed the victim, he heard a sharp, loud sound. He said that? If you you were really that close to the two of them, why did you hear this noise as well? I... Well, maybe the noise just wasn't all that memorable. But according to Mr. Wright's testimony, it was a sharp noise, like a snap. There's no way a noise like that could, f could fail to make any impression. Um, may I have a moment to answer? By all means. I know the reason why I didn't hear the noise. Why didn't you hear the noise? You see, the truth is, I had my headphones on and I was listening to music at the time. H headphones? You mean that both of your ears were covered? The rain was just beginning to let up. But it seemed as though Thor wasn't ready for his fun to come to an end yet. So the sky continued to flash and rumble. Thunder and lightning, huh? Yes, I'm afraid of the sound of thunder. So I put on my headphones to block it all out. Well, Your Honor, as you can see, there weren't any contradictions in her testimony at all. Hmm. Wait a sec, Mia. That testimony just now. She said something that could totally change the whole case. She didn't hear jack shit. Also, there was lightning. But she didn't hear anything. Also, there was lightning. She was also listening to music. But she didn't hear anything. Your Honor, there's a problem with the witness testimony. What? Why is my voice cracking? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, is this pro what is this problem? It's obvious. The problem is what the witness claims to have not heard the snap. Are you deaf? Did you pay attention to the testimony? She said she didn't hear it because she was listening to music. Miss Faye, I'm surprised you were going to see now before me. You should, you should not take that tone with me. I'm not that bad, I think. Well, the testimony we heard, uh, testimony we've just heard seems to be very decisive. Only one that could, all right. Wait, you are not, dude, you are not putting the verdict out right now. No, please. I never meant to incriminate him. This is bad, Mia. If you don't do something, we're gonna lose this. Think again. Hmm, says something that could totally change the whole case. All right, well then the lightning. Your Honor. There's a problem with the witness testimony. What? Didn't you notice? She said there was lightning, correct? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, the photo. I forgot I said that earlier. Yes. What about it? Well, 
lightning is actually a large discharge of electri electricity in the atmosphere, am I right? Now, now's not the time for science lessons, Miss Faye. Yes, Your Honor. Anyways, since the cause of death was electrocution, is it possible that the victim died from being hit by a bolt of lightning? Hmm. I must admit that the thought of that thought has not occurred to me. Just what kind of thought do it? What kind of thoughts do occur to you, anyways? This entire case is built on the premise that Mr. Doug Swallow was murdered. But that very premise itself is mistaken. The defense believes that Mr. Swallow was, in fact, the victim of a stray bolt. It appears the defense may have been onto something. Could it be that the death was actually and it was actually accidental? All right, you did it, Mia. I'll be taking that. Not a uh, what? Hey. I'm heard that you have such a low opinion of me, Miss Faye. Huh? I'm not, I'm not a fool, you know. The prosecution has done its research, Your Honor. We found that there were no lightning strikes on the day of at that location. What? What's more, we have evidence that the electrical cable is definitely linked to the case. Evidence, Mr. Payne? Well, what is this evidence? And this evident, this eff, this eff, I can't. Ah, uh, words. And who is this eff, eff, affidavit? Fuck, you know, affidavit. How the fuck you pronounce that? That's how you pronounce it, right? Affidavit? Affidavit? Yeah, I'm gonna say it that way. The pharmaceutical students who were concluding experiments in their labs that day. That's right? Okay. Allow me to read out to the court that testimony of pharmaceutical students. All equipment in the lab lost power all of a sudden around 3 p.m. that day. Was it a blackout? All the lab's equipment runs on high voltage, Your Honor. So you're saying the equipment lost power because? Precisely. They've lost power because of the sev severed cable. The power outage occurred at approximately 3 p.m. Which fits with the time of death listed in the listed in the autopsy reports. Actually, in other words, the victim died as a result of touching the severed electrical cable. According to the students, the cables were very old. They were planning on having them replaced in the near future. Hmm, I see. Apparently, the cables had become so brittle that even the smallest bump would have caused them to break. Aw, oh, man. However, there's there's one thing that troubles me. If the cable could have been broken by any small bump, then it wouldn't have snapped if it hadn't been bumped into, correct? Well, I suppose you could say that. Hmm, Miss Faye, do you have any thoughts regarding the cause of the several cable? Let me save my shit here. Let me do that. Hmm, alright, bump cable. Any cause of the bump cable? Let's see. All right, I don't know. I can't tell why. Hmm. Where's the uh, old power cable broke due to some sort of impact? Four nine twenty two. Okay. All right. So you tell me he was electrocuted for like five minutes? <laughs> Do you have any thoughts regarding the case of Cable? Your Honor. I don't like how this is looking one bit. I have to come up with something to try to regain some momentum. If it, if it pleases the court, defense would like to state its opinion. Well then, let's hear it. Who or what was it that caused the cable to break? Hmm. Hmm. It was Doug. That's it. This is where the cable. This is why the cable snapped. Well, Your Honor. Yeah. So the only thing that has snapped is my defense. Or right, fuck you. Yeah, ouch, that's harsh. 
Do I not have a health bar? I don't think they gave me a health bar in this one. I just realized that. Who or what? You want me to say Phoenix? Do they really want me to say Phoenix? Come on. Come on. It's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. You don't want me to say Phoenix. Your Honor, please think back to Mr. Wright's testimony. Ah, oh, shit. The defendant's testimony. He said that after he pushed the victim, he heard a loud, sharp noise. Now, that happened at around 3 p.m., correct? Yes. That sounds right. Wait, are you saying that? The lab equipment lost power at 2.55 p.m., which fits right in Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright's timeline. In other words, it was Mr. Wright's shove that caused the power outage. His forced push. Yes, the prosecution also came to that same conclusion. And it was that very shove that caused Mr. Swallow to be electrocuted. I'm afraid I can't agree with you there, Mr. Bain. What? What's that supposed to mean? Take a look at this, where the, take a look at where the victim landed after being shoved. See the umbrella? It was by the electrical pole. That's right, the victim banged into the pole as a result of being pushed. It was that impact that caused the cable to break. Hmm, well that makes sense. And then the victim was electrocuted. I'm sorry, your honor, but no, it doesn't make sense at all. If the victim was shoved into the far into the far pole, then he couldn't have been electrocuted by the severed cable in the foreground here. In other words, someone other than my client must have electrocuted the victim. It was Propatine. She did it. Order, order in the court. Ah, the lamentations of my enemy. How I long to hear them. You're fucked up, Mia. <laughs> it's true. The defense is absolutely correct. There doesn't seem to be any way the defendant could have... Um, Mr. Judge, sir? May I say something? The Madam Attorney ex explanation. She said something that's a little different than I remember them. Wh wh what the? <laughs> Son of a bitch. Please, just once more. May I please testify one last time? Please, Mr. Judge. Of course, it's all right. Just go right ahead and give me your new testimony. And this is it. She's finally starting to show her true colors. The truth is, Feeney pushed him twice. Ah, fuck you. The first time was into the electric pole. That's when the cable broke. Then Dougie tried his best to run away from him. But Feeney caught up and crashed into him from behind. The cable snap, snapping, and Dougie being electrocuted. It all occurred in, la uh, in less than a minute. Hmm. Um, so after being shoved, the victim got up and tried to run away. And that's when the that's when the defendant pushed him for the second time. I'm so sorry, Feeney. But I just have to tell the truth. Am I doing the right thing? I am, Mr. Judge. Of course you are, my dear. As painful as it may seem, you are. Now then, Miss Fay, you may proceed with your cross examination. What a bitch. <laughs> God, you're... Ah, uh, God, why is she so cute? All right. Feeney pushed him twice. Miss Hawthorne, previously in your testimony, you said the following. Actually, I didn't see the moment he pushed Dougie. I know. I'm sorry. I wanted to protect Feeney. So that's why you basically lied to the court? I was a bad girl, I know. Mr. Judge? Y yes? Would you please, please forgive little old me? Of course he won't! Oh, come now. It's just a little white lie. We'll forgive it this time, but please be more careful from now on, right? Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Judge. Not at all. <laughs> the judge had better be more careful himself. The dark alley is friendlier than that girl. 
first time was in the leisure pool. That's when the cable broke. All right. If you say so. <sighs> Had to take a yawn. Sorry. You're saying you actually saw the victim get pushed into the electric pole. I know he doesn't look it, but Feeny can be a bit of an imp when it... A. 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 <laughs> a bit of an imp when he wants to be. That's freaky. Oh, really? But I never imagined that he would cause an electrical cable to break. Feeny really is scary when he gets mad. And it's kind of sexy. I like it when he smacks me around. <laughs> Alright, let me stop there. Yes, he sounds like a very dangerous individual indeed. How his voice cracks and whatnot. Then Dougie tried his best to run away. So let me get this straight. Like, let me get this, like, yo, peep, peep this, peep this one, like, for real. You were happily listening to music on your headphones while you watched this scene unfold. What? What? Miss Faye! I have to ask you to stop badgering the witness. Um, I wasn't happy. I was so scared that I couldn't even move. All I could do was stand there and cheer them on. Cheer them on. What the fuck? Cheer them on? What do you mean? Well, I wish the best for them both. And they would and they would each give the fu fight their all. You're a fucking... What the hell is wrong with you? Hmm. That's very sweet of you to be supportive. What the fuck is wrong with you? What after that? <laughs> what happened after that? Well, what happened was... Buffini caught up and crashed into him from behind. That doesn't sound quite right. There was no fingerprints found on the chest. Uh, I mean, wait, my bad. There were fingerprints found on the chest of the victim's leather jacket. Mr. Payne, were there also fingerprints found on the back of his leather jacket? W well, uh, no, there wasn't. Madam Fay, may I suggest that you listen a little more carefully? I said that he crashed into him from behind, right? My Feeny wouldn't leave any prints behind in that case, would he? Ugh, bitch. The cable snapping and Dougie being electrocuted all occurred in less than a minute. Did you actually witness the moment the victim was electrocuted? I'm sorry, I didn't actually see it. I turned my eyes away. That's understandable. Yes, indeed. It would have been a horrific sight for anyone to behold. If I don't figure out a contradiction here, it's all over. She didn't have much time to come up with her lie, so there must be a chance. There must be a hole in her testimony somewhere. Thank Mia. Alright, time to attack this bitch. Let's get it. <laughs> Alright. Let's see, push them twice. Well, first of all, let's see. Let's see what we got. What do we have? What do we have? We have time. We have time thing, cold medicine. Cool. Right? It stopped. So, if it stopped during the loud impact, it would be around like 255. Two pushes. The umbrella. Ground broken near an electrical pole. At the crime scene. Phoenix, I don't think your test might help. This won't help at all. This won't help at all. Alright. Some sort of impact. And they met at... When did they meet? Oh shit, it doesn't say when they met. Fuck. Hmm. Cause of death was fatal electric shot. Time of death was 3pm, so that's not gonna help improve anything. What about the cold medicine? Victim's hand covered in rice fingerprints. Hmm. First time, hunch pull. Dougie tried his best to run away from him. Caught up and crashed to him from behind. The cable snapping and Dougie me electrocuted. It all happened in less than a minute. That's... That's kind of a big statement. Time of death was at 3 p.m. But this happened at 2.55. You're saying it's less than a minute. Wouldn't make any sense. Uh, 
but you know, can't be very sure on times. I'll, I'm just gonna try this. That's enough, witness. I'm afraid I don't understand. You will in a minute. Could you please take a look at this picture? Oh, that medicine. That's the one Feeney likes to take up for his colds. That's not the medicine I want you to... That's not the medicine. <laughs> it's not the medicine I want you to look at. It's this. The wristwatch. It stopped at, at a precise time the victim was electrocuted. In other words, 3.05 p.m. Yes, and your point is, Miss Faye? My point is this. What time was it when the lab suffered the power outage due to the cable snapping? Well, according to the student's testimony, the answer is clear. It was 2.55 p.m. Oh, shit! Would you care to explain the court, Miss Dahlia? What exactly happened during the 10-minute interval? Exactly. I find it hard for the man to be, like, electrocuted for fucking five minutes straight, let alone ten. The defense... The defense proposes that. It was during this interval that the real murderer killed Mr. Doug Swallow. Order! Order in the court! This is nonsense! The real murderer? Even if you can't deny- Even if you- Even you can't deny the time between the cable breaking and the electrocution are completely unaccounted for. Then who was it? Who else are you saying could have done it? There's only one person who could have murdered Mr. Swallow. Only after my client had left the scene. Was there a window of opportunity for the real killer? Miss Faye. Is the defense ready to indict someone someone other than Mr. Phoenix as the killer? It's finally time. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Yes, Your Honor. We're ready. Very well. But remember, if you accuse the wrong person, you will be penalized. I don't have any health, so I don't know if penalized means game over. So let's just do that real quick. Think very carefully before you speak, Miss Faye. Now then, Miss Faye, let's have it. Who's the real murderer? It's obviously you. Could have been, it could have only been you. Dolly or Hawthorne. What? How? How can you? The defense is grasping at straws. Ten minutes passed between the time the cable broke and the time of electrocution? What exactly are you doing that whole time, Miss Hawthorne? Were you really listening to some music while cheering them both on as they fought? I find it hard to believe that you didn't lift a finger to stop the men dearest to you. Order. Order, Miss Faye. What? I mean, why? That is so. Miss Hawthorne. I believe you did witness the two men fighting on that day. However, after Mr. Wright pushed the victim and subsequently left the scene, it was you who pushed Mr. Swallow to his death by your very own hands. How? How can you say something so mean, Madam Fay? I didn't do anything. Miss Fay, this is a very serious charge, you're. Your Honor, that bitch is lying. <laughs> I have something I want to say. Y you, what is this? Please, please strike everything the defense. Please, wait, what? So you strike it from the record. What the hell? Are you stupid? They're totally wrong, Miss Fay. Dolly, she, she couldn't do something like that. I'm gonna fucking strangle you. I will hop over this counter. Mr. Wright, get back in your seat. Sit that ass down. Bailiff, grab this man. Uh, let go of me. Leave my dolly alone. That boy. He's got himself way over his head. Oh, Mr. Grossberg, you're back. It seems I arrived just in the nick of time. I found the police record on the incident in your newspaper clipping. Thank you. Thanks so much. Exactly what I was hoping for. You better take a good look at it. It's, uh, details how you came to... 
It details how you came to lose your boyfriend. Ugh. Now then, the defense, made, <laughs> the defense has made a very serious accusation. Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, really, Your Honor, I, that is, uh... May I interrupt you for just a moment, Mr. Prosecutor? Oh, don't worry, my dear. I have the situation well handled. Uh, that's, uh, go right ahead. Madam Faye, are you seriously accusing me of killing my sweet Dougie? Yes, I am. Fucking asshole. Not only am I saying you're a murderer, but you also tried to pin the whole thing on your current boyfriend. I told you that you should let me handle this. Uh, sorry. Please go ahead. How can you say that? I'm absolutely devoted to my dear Feeney. The notion that I would try to frame him is ludicrous. This is all just too much for poor... My... For poor little me to bear. Ah, uh, I believe the girl is trying to ask what on earth her motive would be. The answer to that lies somewhere in this police record. Time to check it out. Eight months ago, an incident occurred in the basement cafeteria of this building. And then... And then the same day the two of them accidentally meet? Your Honor, the defense requires further testimony from Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Further testimony? About what? About the events of the day when she first met the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What could that possibly have to do with this case? The witness claims that she has no reason to frame the defendant, am I correct? Well, I have evidence that suggests that she, in fact, has a very good reason. Very well, then. The court grants the defendant's request. Young lady, would you mind staying on uh, mind staying on for just a little bit longer? Of course not, Mr. Judge. Get ready for the battle of your fucking life. Alright. I first met my... What the fuck is this music? Oh my god. <laughs> I first met my darling Feeny eight months ago. It's like... We were destined to meet in this very courthouse basement reading room. The moment our eyes met, my heart skipped a beat. We've been going out ever since that fateful day. We're so lovey wovey we- God damn it. We're so lovey wovey, we literally make people sick. It's just jealousy, I think. Mr. Wright. Wait, what? Mr. Wright, do that again and you'll be held in contempt of court. And now, we enter... Oh wait, hold up. Did I read Phoenix as fucking... I read Phoenix as Hawthorne, didn't I? Wow. Okay. As we used to say in the days of my youth, go get her. Alright. First, my darling Feeney, eight months ago. Destiny, very courthouse. When our eyes met, hearts get the beat. Been going out ever since. All right. Okay. Tell me more about that. The courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, Madam Fay. After all, Feeney was... Feeney was not only an art student, but he was also planning on becoming a lawyer. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about you. What was a literature student like you doing in a courthouse reading room? This line of questioning is a waste of time. It has nothing to do with our murder case. Miss Fay, I'm warning you. This has nothing to do with Mr. Small's case. I have to remember the judge is on Dolly's side. I better tra tread carefully. I'm gonna keep pressing. Fuck you. Your Honor, if you allow me to... Uh, la 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 wow, if you allow me some latitude, I think I can establish relevance. Please ask her to continue with her testimony. Very well. Young lady, I have a simple question for you. What were you doing downstairs in the courthouse reading room? If it pleases, Your Honor, the answer is simply this. I had come to the courthouse to do some research for a paper I was writing. What was you writing? 
You were writing a paper? On what? On the relationship between modern scenery poetry and the criminal underworld. Oh, that sounds like a fascinating research idea. Am I getting old? Now I've even forgotten. What have I forgotten? Again with the midlife crisis shit. Mia, why did that girl really come to this courthouse? Isn't that why you wanted to know? And speaking of forgetting things, you haven't forgotten the police report, have you? Ah, oh, fuck. I forgot, I'm sorry, yeah, I did forget. Let me read through that. Thanks for reminding me, Grossberg, sorry. My bad. All right, let's see what we got here. Report. Location, district courtroom, cafeteria. Time and day, August 7th, 4 p.m. Diego Armando, 28, occupation, lawyer, suspect, Dahlia Hawthorne, 19. Oh shit, she was a suspect. Armando ingested poison while interviewing the suspect regarding another case. Traces of poison were found in the victim's coffee cup. Not po oh my fucking god, the bottle's poison. Oh, Phoenix, it's not that easy, man. <sighs> no poison was found in the vicinity or on the suspect's person. It is unclear how the poison entered the victim's coffee. Oh my god. Uh, Phoenix. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. It's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. <sighs> hmm. What was it about Mr. Wright that made your heart malfunction like that? In my personal opinion, he just looks like a typical snotty-nosed college brat. Perhaps, perhaps to a woman your age, but for me, Finney's handsome. Perhaps to you, Miss Hawthorne, but to the rest of the planet, he's a dime a dozen. Love is a, mystery, is a mysterious thing, and I object to the line of questioning. If you were to look at my wife, for example, you might all be in shock. He's telling the truth. I was truly shocked. Beautiful mushrooms growing tall in the darkness. It comes from cow dung. That's the poem that best describes how I feel about my Feeny. What the fuck? That's not good. Okay. Been going out ever since that fateful day. Were there any bad feelings between you and Mr. Swallow? No, not at all. We parted on very good terms. But that can't be. Our investigation also shows that it was a clean breakup. Huh? Are you you sure? Yes, it seems they both wanted to do it that way. So the victim wanted to break up with her. Tell me why. So, you're saying that Mr. Swallow also wanted to break up with you. But, well, you see. What a cool thing to ask a lovely young lady like this. By the way, I have never once considered leaving my wife. I don't give a fuck. No one cares. Exactly. Nobody asks. I'm trying to find out who the fuck asked. <laughs> she's, try she's trying to deny it. It must mean Doug Swallow must have seen through her little act. He must have gotten a glimpse of her true nature. Listen to me, Mia. That woman has the judge in, her p in the palm of her hands, you see. He has a wife? Exactly, right? So they... <laughs> you got a wife? I mean, he better have one. He's what? He's fucking... Where, what, what he's kicking at? 94, uh, 49? Damn. Midlife crisis. <laughs> so, so the only way to, uh, wow, the only way to discredit her is to find a contradiction in her testimony. All right, I'm just, I'm just finding more information out. Okay, it's like we were destined to meet in this very courthouse. Tell me more about that. Courthouse reading room. That's a strange place to meet the love of your life. That's not true, man. Oh wait, did I really? My bad. I didn't- I forgot that I fucking did this already. I'm sorry. I mean, good for him, but it's still surprising. Exactly. Um, moment our eyes met. Wait. Oh, it completely changed the first one? Oh, wait. No, not- my fa my bad. That's... Eight months ago. I'm pressing that. So, until that time, you have been dating Doug Swallow. Yes. I'm a real fool, I know. Letting my emotions change so quickly. I'm ashamed of myself. No, no, not at all. Look at me. I'm infamous for changing my mind. Fuck you. My routines have been have been calling me Judge Fickle. 
Maybe you should look for a different line of work. Despite that, however, he always, always has down the correct verdict. That's why some people also call him the Great Jajini. What the fuck? Hmm. Alright. Listen to this fucking music. Alright, let's see. Evidence that will help me in this case. Not you. Not you. I don't think bottle will help. Broken umbrella's not good. Phoenix test money. Done. You can help. You can help. You're not helping. And you are helping. Hmm. Alright. But I need a contradiction, though. Courtroom. What is, uh, what does Mia's paper say? I don't even think that I read her paper. What did this one say? Yeah. Real information may disclose the scene. Uh, incident at the courthouse cafeteria said to have been a lawyer. However, police questioned 19 year old female. Alright, cool. It's like we're destined to meet in the bottom of the reading room. I came to this courthouse to do some research paper. Alright, stop. You lying. Little bitch. Now, I can either throw this, or I can throw this, but this one directly says that she was a suspect, so I am gonna throw this in her face. Ms. Hawthorne, you weren't here because you did a research paper, were you? Did you actually come here for a much more important reason? Uh... What? What's the meaning of this coggy smile on your face, Miss Faye? Eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse, there was another tragedy. Another tragedy? Do you mean the incident in which the attorney was poisoned? The name of the suspect and the incident is listed here in the report. And that name is... Dahlia Hawthorne. D Dahlia? Yes! The sweetie pie of everyone's eye, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. She was the prime suspect in a criminal case just eight months ago. Order! Order, I say. This is unbelievable. It's true, then. The loveliest... The loveliest? Wow. <laughs> Miss Fay, that's not fair. You can't slander my witness. Um... I... I winced in pain, will not allow it. M Mr. Prosecutor, I believe I was speaking. Oh, b pardon me. Go right ahead. It's true that about eight months ago, the police expressed some interest in me. Hmm. Express some entrance, hmm? Mr. Judge, sir? I know I'm under oath, so I'll tell you the absolute truth. I did not commit the crime that occurred during that incident eight months ago. I see. Okay. I try- I tied the two crimes together. Now, I just gotta stay on the offensive. Well done, Mia. Oh. You really, really lit a fire in my heart and my buttocks. I can hardly tell which is more infl- Wow. Inflamed. My spirit or my hemorrhoids. I don't need to know that. The poisoning. I mean, the lawyer who was poisoned to discuss, uh... Wait, what? Who was poisoned to discuss something in the cafeteria that day. Wait, what? I- Oh, my bad. I thought she said I mean, my bad. I met the lawyer who was discussed in the- Okay. I left my seat for just a moment, and then when it happened, from what I heard, it was a liquid poison. It's lethal in just two teaspoons. Not only that, I heard it was a very special kind of poison. So you see, I'm innocent. I wouldn't even know where to get a poison like that. Oh, you're a fucking, you're a liar. Hmm. So that's what happened here eight months ago. However, as you heard from the witness testimony, she had nothing to do with it. I think the defendants is just, is just about out of tricks. I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Payne, but I'm afraid the defense has many, had many more tricks up its sleeves. And I'll be sure to show them to you before the end of this cross-examination. Ugh! What the? Why does the defense suddenly feel stronger? Ugh, oh, Mia! You're glowing with a true lawyer's aura, my dear. The proud posture and self-confidence absolutely smashing. Absolutely smashing. Yes, indeed. 
All right. All right. Okay. Would not know where to get a poison. Met the lawyer. He was poisoned. This moment ago, that's when it happened. What I heard, it was a liquid poison that was lethal just two spawns. How do you know that? About how much liquids is two teaspoons? Hmm, well, let me see. My bottle of iron drops says, says uh, half fluid once, which is equal to three teaspoons. So it's about two thirds of that amount, huh? The poison was found in the lawyer's mug of coffee. Must have been after I left the table. Someone must have quickly slipped it in there. That was a very special kind of poison. A special kind of poison? How so? Well, I heard that it was almost impossible to detect. Oh. And where would you... And where would something like that come from? I'm sorry. All I know is what I overheard the policemen say. They said something about using evidence... Chem using advanced chemical processing to purify it. Advanced chemical processing? Well, that's quite... Impressive. Most impressive. The better- Oh my fucking god. Oh no, it all just clicked in my head. Click clack. Hmm. She... Got... She heard about the drugs. Knows nothing. Exactly. She got the poison from her boyfriend who was known as the greatest alchemist in the campus, in the college campus. She got the poison from him, she asked him to make it, he made it, gave it to her. She, she poisoned the guy, she killed him, right? Either that or she learned it from his notes or something, right? Killed the guy, gave it to Phoenix to hide it. The dude found out, he dumped her, but he's like, I'm not gonna snitch on you. He later finds out that she's going out with Phoenix, because Phoenix is telling everybody he's carrying this poison bottle, right? And he's like, oh shit, that's not good. <laughs> Meets Phoenix, he's all like, listen, listen. That girl's not good news. You gotta stop this shit. Phoenix being the super simp he is, loses his temper, right? And then her overhearing it, because she's all like, I'm hearing about this meeting going down, right? with my current boyfriend, who's my scapegoat, who's my scapegoat, and my other boyfriend, who fuck helped me with the poison. Right? Bam. So she peeps in, sees this, hear them talk, hear things get violent. She don't know what the fuck they said, probably. She's like, for all I know, he could have snitched me out. I'm killing that motherfucker. And then the rest is history. Alright. <laughs> Better question is how did the criminal get something like that? So you see, I'm innocent. I don't even know where to get a poison like that. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> and that's the reason they didn't arrest you? Because no one could show how you got in the poison? I think that's good enough reason, lady. She's right. And I think we've all had enough of Miss Faye's questioning. Hmm. So in essence, the main reason Ms. Hawthorne was never arrested for this crime was because no one could show how she could have obtained the poison. That's all we need to do is find the way she established how she could have gotten some, right? Great. Now just how do I do that? Alright, girl. Alright. Alright. Okay. Alright. <laughs> okay. Listen, 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 listen. I'm not sure if this would count, but I'm gonna do it. You got the poison from him. Stop lying to me. You wouldn't know how to get that kind of poison? I don't believe you. What? In fact, you had easy access to that poison, didn't you? At your boyfriend's lab. B -b boyfriend You mean the victim Doug Swallow? That's right. Up until eight months ago, Miss Hawthorne was dating Mr. Swallow. And if you recall, Miss uh, Mr. Swallow was a pharmaceutical student at, uni at Ivy University. University? Wow. University. <laughs> Pharmacology. His laboratory contained highly advanced chemistry equipment. 
In fact, without such equipment, the culprit could never have established such a rare and special poison. Well, Miss Hawthorne, it seems you had access to such a poison after all. And then, it was a matter of slipping it into the victim's coffee when he wasn't looking. The only person who could have done this was the one sitting at his very table. You. Order. Order. Could it be? That's nothing but a baseless... May I say something, Madam Faye? What is it, Miss Hawthorne? The amount of poison in the coffee was two teaspoons, right? In order to carry that much liquid, you would need some kind of container. Well, yes, that's true. I was searched immediately after the incident took place. Quite true, in fact, the entire courthouse was turned upside down. But they didn't find a suspicious container anywhere, did they? She's right. They even mentioned that in the report. Well, you could have easily gotten rid of something that small. Excuse me, madam? But this is a court of law. If you say something I th if you saying I threw the poison container away, I think you need to show some kind of proof. P proof? She's got me good with it. Provide some evidence or I'll have to I'll have to disallow this line of questioning, Miss Faye. Unless we can come up with some evidence, we're gonna lose this lead. The police conducted a full body search on Dahlia and the entire courthouse. And yet the container holding the poison disappeared right after the crime occurred. If, you, if you're going to accuse this young lady of committing the murder, then where is the container? Oh, your honor. You were, folk, you were forced to get rid of the container in a hurry, weren't you? And that's why you passed it on to someone that had nothing to do with the case. Someone that you knew wouldn't be searched. Who is this person? Mr. Phoenix Wright, of course. So the defendant was the witness accomplice? Of course not. She gave the poison to him, disguised as a present. Wh what? But, but that's... Hmm. That's a charming little necklace. Is this a little bottle? It's really quite cute. So what about it? What does it mean, Miss Faye? The day that the witness met and fell for Mr. Phoenix Wright was eight months ago. August 27th, the very same day as the poison incident. Under the pretense of love, the witness gave my, my, client, my client a present. All for the purpose of hiding the own piece of evidence that would give her away. The own piece of evidence? The one piece of evidence, my bad. What? Are you saying there's a deadly poison in here? No, there's no longer any poison in that bottle. However, I'm certain if the crime lab were to analyze it, they would find a trace amount. Oh, shit. No! Order. Order in the court. <clears throat> On behalf of Dolly, I object! M Mr. Wright, control yourself. I won't let you bully her like this. Mr. Wright, I told you. I thought I told you to stay in your seat. Mr. Wright, why? Why are you going through so much trouble to protect her? Why? Because... Because I'm madly in love with her. Ugh. Imp. Madly in love? I haven't heard anyone say that in a long time. Mr. Wright, have you ever thought about this? Why exactly would a woman like Dahlia Hawthorne want to date you anyways? Well, I guess she must, she must be madly in love with me too. Mr. Wright, please open your eyes. At this point in the trial, I think it should be obvious to everyone. The real reason that Dahlia Hawthorne is dating you is... To keep your ass quiet. It's because of the necklace. She wants it back. Dahlia Hawthorne was not, and, and is not, madly in love with you. The only thing she's after is the bottle necklace you love to wear around your neck. My, my necklace? <laughs> back, back there in the waiting room, you said it yourself. 
Yeah. But she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl. Asking for a present. Asking for a present back like that. For Dolly Hawthorne, the necklace is irrefutable evidence on her crime. That's why she absolutely had to get it back. You're, you're lying. But you never gave it back to her. And to make things worse for her... Oh wait, my bad, I gave me the wrong voice. And to make things worse for her, you insisted on showing it to everyone you met. That's why she... I don't... I don't believe you. No! That's a lie! Grow up! <laughs> Grow up, Phoenix! Mia, yeah, you alright? The defendant's getting away. Bailiff, hurry! Mia. Mia, are you alright? Yes. I think so. That boy. He went completely insane. Where, where's Mr. Wright? It looks like the bailiff caught him, so he should be back soon enough. Thank goodness. Oh no. What is it? The bottle necklace. It's Hawthorne's present. It's gone. What? That's terrible. Mr. Wright must have grabbed it when he slammed into me. Foolish boy. That's the only thing that could have saved him. What in blazes are we supposed to do now? God damn it, Phoenix. Mr. Wright, this, this sort of behavior is unprecedented in the history of the courts. I'm... I'm sorry. I'm afraid that your apology is not enough. Mr. Wright. What did you do with the bottle necklace? Forgive me. I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Just give me back the necklace. I ate it. Fucking idiot! You what? You... You ate it? It was too big to swallow, so I had to chew it into little bits first, but yeah, you ate glass? Uh... What the... What is he doing now? Your Honor, you gotta stop this trial. Mr. Wright, Mr. Wright! You feeling okay? Does your stomach hurt? The bottle you swallow may have some poison left in it. It seems the defendant has proven the prosecution's case for us. Clearly the bottle did not contain a deadly poison. How can you be so sure? <laughs> I think that's obvious. As you can see, the defendant is still very much alive. Listen, Payne. Shut the hell up. She said that you need at least two tablespoons of it. And if there's just a trace amount, he should be fine. Maybe feeling a bit of minor inconveniences later on, but he's fine. As for the poison, more like more like a fleeting defense attorney's overreacting imagination. Not fleeting, my bad. Fledgling. I misread that. Hmm. So it would seem. No. There must be some mistake. The bottle must not have had any poison left in it. Either that, or the poison must have lost its potency. There, there. It's alright, rookie. Trusting your client is the most noble thing a defense attorney can do. And it's heartwarming to see that you place this much faith in Mr. Wright. Mm. That's how it is for us on the prosecution side, too. For example, I would trust the witness Miss Hawthorne with my very life. Which is why I can state that you're a set that your assessment of her is completely wrong. That's enough. Unfortunately, Miss Fay, I cannot accept your explanation of events. But why? This may be impossible for a beginner like you to understand, but in a court of law, evidence is everything. Huh? Even after I prove so much, she's gonna get away with everything. Well, now that the suspicions surrounding Ms. Hawthorne has been cleared up, I would like to proceed with the trial. Mr. Wright! I'm sorry, Miss Fay. 
totally slipped my mind. I'm really, really sorry. I know you believe in me. And I feel like I really let you down. Mr. Wright, why are you trying to say? Hmm. There's nothing I forgot. There's something I forgot to tell you. What is it? And that day, the day I met Doug Swallow. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your own sake. You continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. Y you're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Last night, someone stole some poison from our lab. But poison? The same thing happened eight months ago. A drug sample was stolen. She came to the lab that time too. It could only have been her. That girl's a thief. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Is it true? Did he really say that? that that's ridiculous! There's one more thing. After I pushed him that day, I got worried and came back to have a look. And she was there. Dolly was right there. She was crouched down next to him. What? She told me not to ever tell anyone about it. I'm sorry, Dolly. Your Honor, is this... The defendant is... Miss Faye, you tell them. Dolly didn't do it. She's innocent. So, Dolly has stole poison eight months ago too, huh? If you put the two together with- if you put that together with Mr. Wright's testimony, then there's only one possible conclusion. The defendant believes that Miss Dahlia Hawthorne stole some poison on the night before she killed Doug Swallow. The night before? Naturally, her motive for stealing it was to kill someone. M Miss Fay? If you're so certain from your theory, then let me ask you this. Mia, this is your last chance. Think carefully now. Let me save this. <laughs> Alright. There's something that she definitely wanted to get back. Therefore... Actually, who was Miss Dahlia Hawthorne planning to kill? She was gonna kill you, Phoenix. You were gonna be a dead man. There was one person that was standing squarely in Miss Dahlia Hawthorne's way. And that person was... Mr. Phoenix Wright. M -m me Th That's preposterous. After all, it was Doug Swallow that was murdered. Well, it's true that that's how things worked out. But, le let's remember that Mr. Swallow died of electrocution, not poison. The person that Ms. Hawthorne was planning to poison was in fact... You, Phoenix, right? There's no one else it could have been. But how can that be true? I thought Mr. Wright and Ms. Hawthorne were in love. Poor Mr. Wright. Must be killing him. Hang in there. I'll bring her to justice, I swear it. As I said before, the only thing Miss Hawthorne truly cared about was the one piece of evidence linking her to the incident eight months ago. That's right. The bottle necklace. That's all she cared about. But even so, why would she go so far to murder him? Eight months ago, just after the fall of the attorney in the, ba in the basement cafeteria. Dolly Hawthorne would think of only one thing. How to get rid of the bottle necklace as quickly as possible. No, it can't be. It was a pretty good move she made too. The evidence was missing for a long time. But there was just one big problem. Although she got him to hide the evidence, Mr. Wright refused to return it to her. To him, the tiny little bottle was a cherished treasure. Even showed it to everyone he met. Y you mean, that's why she tried to kill Mr. Wright? Correct, Your Honor. It was to retrieve that piece of evidence. Th that's... That can't be true! 
Sorry, Phoenix. Feeny? What a choke you are. Oh, shit. Honestly, how can any woman ever count on you for anything? They've been told you time and time again to keep your trap shut about me and that necklace. You disgust me. Miss Hawthorne. It appears that we're nearing the end of this trial. Fine. I can tell you... I can... <clears throat> I can tell you plan on making me into a criminal no matter what I say. You are a criminal, Miss Hawthorne. We'll see about that. But first, where's your evidence? It seems your sniveling little crybaby of a client has eaten the bottle as a snack. <laughs> well, um... Hey, old man. You sneal You senile or something? Why don't you just say something instead of sitting there with your dumb look on your face? M Miss Hawthorne, what happened to you? <laughs> Are you really that shocked? Or do you prefer me this way, Mr. Judge? With absolutely no proof, you treat a voluntary witness like she's a mass murderer. Well, I have nothing more to say. I'll be heading home now, if you don't mind. But, but we're not finished. Fine. Then ask this nasty old hag to finish up already. And I don't like it. I don't like it either. That was fucked up. <laughs> I can't let her get away this time. Stop, Mia. If you keep on pushing without any evidence, you could pay the ultimate price as a lawyer. The ultimate price. You've been forced to take off your attorney's badge forever, I'm afraid. No! That's mine! You can't have it! You better think it over carefully, Miss Faye. Or should I say, Miss Gray? Oh, you bitch! Well, Miss Faye? Can you provide evidence that would establish her guilt once and for all? Oh my god! What a bitch! If I mess up here, my career as a lawyer is over. But to be honest, at this point, I don't even have evidence this well-founded. Even so, I'd rather lose my attorney's badge than let her get away with murder. Your Honor, the defense would like to pr would like to pr the, 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 the defense would like to present proof. Impossible. You can't possibly. Stupid woman. Bitch. <laughs> It is the opinion of the court that there has already been enough discussion. Therefore, I will allow only one piece of evidence to be presented. Just one? If you're unable to establish her guilt, then I'm afraid a very harsh verdict will immediately be handed down to Mr. Wright. I understand, Your Honor. I can just imagine the headlines for tomorrow's newspapers. Up and coming lawyer plummets to earth before she gets the chance to soar. So... She was planning on poisoning Mr. Wright. Let me just save again, because I feel like I'm going to fuck this up royally somehow. There we go. If that's the case, then the poison was probably in there. Oh. Oh, no. He did not eat the poison. Phoenix. Well, then, Miss Faye, please present your evidence. Show to this court infutable proof that Miss Hawthorne was planning to poison Mr. Wright. Maybe? <laughs> Alright, let's see. Well, these two won't help, this won't help, this won't help. Article. We haven't used this yet. Being disclosed, the same thing. Cafeteria said to have been lawyer. However, police questioned 19 year old female college student that was sitting with the victim. That's not gonna help at all. Uh, that won't help. Pretty sure that, uh, pretty sure this won't help. Uh, yep. Is that it? That's all we got? Alright, well... Guess Cold Killer can only be the- can be the only thing, right? Until eight months ago... Show the court here for the proof that Ms. Hawthorne was planning to kill- planning to poison him. I don't know. Here. Yep. Your Honor, the evidence that will prove her guilt once and for all. Cold Killer X? Phoenix Rice Beloved Cold Medicine. 
<laughs> Does our rookie defense attorney have a bit of a cold? If I do, I still wouldn't. Take this cold medicine. After all, it's been poisoned. Wh what? Remember what the defendant said in his testimony? But I lost my bottle around lunchtime on that day of the incident. I already ate with Dolly, just the two of us. She was the one who took his bottle of Cold Killer X. Then she poisoned it knowing that Mr. Wright was going to take some. Now you're really grasping at straws. After all, it's the victim, Doug Swallow, that was holding the medicine. I don't think the court... I don't like the... Wow, my bad. I would like the court to recall the crime that happened here eight months ago. Where did Miss Hawthorne hide the evidence? Huh? What are you talking about? Eight months ago. The poison was hidden in her bottle necklace. Which she then gave to someone else for safekeeping. Someone she had accidentally ran into the reading room. My client, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yes, that's right. She did the same thing this time as well. After shoving the victim, Mr. Phoenix Wright left the scene of the crime. That is when the murderer, Dahlia Hawthorne, appeared. With her, she was carrying the poison bottle of Cold Killer X. This, of course, was so she could carry out her plan to murder Mr. Wright. Hmm. I believe she did testify that she was going to meet with the defendant. Yes. And she heard and saw everything that happened at the scene of the crime. Including what the defendant and victim were arguing about at the, at the cut electrical cable. And then... Oh, fuck. I didn't even have a chance to read it. My bad. She used the severed cable to silence him forever. Unfortunately for her... This is when the problem occurred. Mr. Wright, who she thought had left the scene, came back to check on the victim. And on top of that, became, uh, on top of that, because of the power outage, some students showed up as well. It's hardly any wonder that she was, as she puts it, in a state of panic. Recalling that she was carrying the bottle of poison cold medicine, she must have thought, what if they search me like they did eight months ago? E eight months ago? Yes, she disposed of the evidence exactly the same way she did back then. She had someone else hold it. In this case, Doug Swallow. Goddamn. <laughs> oh, come on now, everyone. Surely you aren't fooled, are you? This stupid woman. She's nothing but a filthy, stinking liar. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? H huh? Y yeah, that's exactly right. It's just pure desperation. Hmm? I wonder which one of us is the desperate one. So, Miss Hawthorne. This cold medicine. I wonder if you wouldn't mind taking some. Well, Mr. Wright ate the necklace of yours, right? Now it's your turn to prove your innocence. What did you say? If I'm just a filthy, stinking liar, then there's no need to worry. So come on, show us. I dare you to take some of what this medicine. Take some of this medicine right now. Miss Fay. Miss Fay. Oh shit. She killed the butterflies. Do you think you've won? Well. Do you, Miss Faye? Hmm? <laughs> it's just fine. For the time being, victory is yours. But for the time being, well, I have a very long memory, you know. You and I will meet again. I'm certain of it. Well then, Mr. Judge, I'll see you later too. Okay? Huh? What? What? I'm going to go spend a little quality time with the man in blue now. I wish you all the best. Uh? What? Phew. It's finally all over. 
I, I refuse to accept this. The defense hasn't shown a scrap of evidence to support their outrageous claim. But even so, your witness seems to have accepted it. I don't care. I'm wasting paying, damn it. I don't believe one word the rookie lawyer has said. Well then, Mr. Payne, let me ask you this. Y yeah? Would you care to try this cold medicine? Wh what? Just a little earlier, I could have sworn you said... There, there. It's alright, rookie. For example, I would trust the witness, Miss Hawthorne, with my very life. So, is she so trustworthy? Then I'm sure there couldn't possibly be any poison in here, right? Uh, well, uh, you see, uh... And here comes the back pedal. Come on now, rookie killer. Show this rookie how it's done. How much trust do you really have for this woman? Are you willing to bet your life? Yeah, that's what I thought. Exactly what I thought. Let's talk about it. He is. My beautiful hair. Wow, I was literally about to say his hair is flying off. He's like, my beautiful hair. No. Yikes. Mm. Mr. Payne, about Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Well, I'll file papers for her immediate for immediate rest. Hmm. Tragic. But not surprise. But not surprising. I knew there was something suspicious about her from the very beginning. Oh, shut up! Don't lie. You just admitted you were wrong. By the way, Miss Fay. Yes, Your Honor. Was it just me, or did you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne seem to know each other? Yes. Your Honor, whether you, uh, whether we did or not has no bearing on this case. Mm, very well. Mr. Payne. This can't be happening. It's a nightmare. It's like losing my daughter. Wait, what? <laughs> you have a daughter? It appears Mr. Payne has lost his spirit along with his hair. Does the defendant have anything further to say? Yes, I do. Fuck and you. It, it can't be true. My, my dear Dolly. Hmm. Very well then. I believe I'm. All, I believe I'm ready to pass judgment and bring this trial to an end. The court finds the defendant Phoenix Wright not guilty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. This courtroom is adjourned. <sighs> April 11th, 3.16 p.m. District Court Defense Lobby number three. Mira, you were wonderful in there. Thanks for everything, Mr. Grossberg. During the verdict, I thought my hemorrhoids were going to explode like Mount Vesuvius. Mm, Mr. Grossberg, maybe you think you could stop talking about them? Oh, that's rather rude. Anyways, this case really made me think. What does it really mean to have a relationship of mutual trust with the client? Perhaps it is we veteran lawyers who have lost sight of this. Oh, Mr. Wright. Congratulations! Uh, thanks? Uh, you know, I was thinking... Go, go on? The dolly that I saw up there on the witness stand... I don't think she... it was really her. Hmm? What? Yeah, the dolly I know would never have said those kind of terrible things. Maybe... maybe she was like, I don't know, a fake or something? Ugh, boy, this poor kid still hasn't got a clue. You need to forget about her, Mr. Wright, for your own sake. Yeah, you're right. That's probably for the best. Also, you need to relax a bit more. Gotta grow up a little. But... but... Out of all my friends, everyone said I'm the most grown up. Ugh! What kind of company does this guy got? Right now, I'm studying to become a lawyer myself. That's what you keep saying. But I thought you were in art department. Well, yeah, I am. But there's a friend that I desperately want to help. And if I hurry, then I should be able to save the, him in time. I see. Say, Miss Faye. 
A lawyer's someone who can help people when they're in trouble, right? Mr. Wright? I'm still new at this myself. But, I think that's exactly what a lawyer is. Okay, I'm going to do it. Study my butt off. I'll become a lawyer for sure. I hope. I hope we can see each other again someday. Someday, maybe, even in court. It's been five years since I was acquitted since I was acquitted of all charges. I became a lawyer like I planned and managed to save my friend. But Mia has passed on to a better place. For me, this trial brings up a lot of painful memories. But it also brings up some very precious ones and memories that I thought would never rise to the surface again. Mia's gone now. But even so, I can hear her in my mind. Phoenix, no matter what, I always believe in your client. In a court of law, your greatest weapon is your belief. Five years ago, something has happened that made me think back to her words of wisdom. But that's a story for another day. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. The end. Oh my god! I love this game! <laughs> I can't. I got a smile on my face. Big old smile. Makes me happy. Let me just check something real quick. Make sure the stream isn't fucking up. There we go. All right, God damn it! I gotta take some of my water. That was good. Now I have to say, I'm a little confused here, mainly because <laughs> there he is. Yep, there he, we're gonna learn about this guy. I'm a little confused because Dahlia went. All right, you win, but I'll be back. And, as we all know, Mia's gone. So, what, what's gonna happen? I don't know. Anyways, brand new episode. First of all, I have to check the time to make sure. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> we are not, we are definitely not gonna have enough time to get into this one, right? We have like about, uh, about like 40-ish minutes, but we can definitely get into the, get into the episode and start checking that out. Would you like to save your progress? Of course I would. Look at that. Look at that. The time is 1 a.m. Beep. <laughs> hmm. The safe. Detective, we made it. Phew. What a relief. Glad the jewel is still safe. Gumshoe. Oh, you said it, pal. It must have been our rock solid security that scared him off. Would you mind opening the safe? Okay. What's going on here? That is a lot. We've been had! Mask disc Wait, what? Mask de- Wait. Mask? Demasquerade. What? <laughs> Better luck next time, gentlemen. Look at this fucking tuxedo mask, motherfucker. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm afraid I must be leaving now. We shall meet again. When the next moon is full. <laughs> Salutations. <laughs> okay. October 11th, 3.24pm. Right in Kola office. Hey, Nick! 
Oh my god! It's Maya! I love Maya. I missed her. She's amazing. And I miss her fucking song. Let's go. I love this song. I've been wanting to listen to it for the longest time. Hey, Nick. Get a load of this. Hey, you didn't listen to me? You can clean the toilet later. This is important. What are you freaking out about now? <laughs> Today will be the last time you talk to me that way. Huh? We're about to hit the big time. Big time? What do you mean by we? You don't mean you and me, right? <laughs> there she is. Exactly. Don't be silly. I'm talking about me and... I'm talking about me and Pearl! Later! Look at her. She's evil. She's evil. Where's Pearl Patine? <laughs> Listen, I'm still... I'm waiting. Like, I sent... I'm gonna say right now. I sent out the emails, right? I'm waiting for responses on these emotes. Pearl Patine is a thing. I didn't forget about that. Pearl Patine. I love Pearl Patine. She's great. I love her. I'm talking about me and Pearl, of course. Hello, it's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Nick. Pearls! You haven't changed a bit. Wait, what are you doing here anyways? Check the court record. Oh my god, look at this handsome man. Me? What more can I say? This is my third year as a young lawyer, but skilled lawyer. 26. Damn. Pearl! I love you! Wait, what are you doing here anyways? Haven't you heard, Mr. Nick? Here, take a look at this. What is this? Some kind of poster? Treasure exhibit, oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Your defiled great-great-great-grandmother's ashes is now in a paper. <laughs> Kirin Village, isn't that... That's right. It's our hometown. Pearly and mine, that is. What's this about treasures from the boonies? <laughs> Very funny. You can laugh all you want. But you'll be singing another tune tonight. Tonight? What about tonight? The treasure of curing exhibit doesn't actually start until next week, but... The promoter sent us some special VIP entry, test pa uh, entry, entry passes. That's why I dressed up extra special today. What do you think, Nick? You're wearing the same shit as always. Heh, <laughs> same Maya, different day. This young lady here is Maya Faye. The youngest sister of Mia Faye, my friend and mentor. I first met her two years ago. I was working on the case surrounding Mia's death. And ever since then, I've been the one who's been keeping this law office afloat from behind the scenes. Oh wait, my bad, Mia's saying that. <laughs> Actually, that's just a cover for her true identity. In reality, she's a spirit medium and a bit of a shady character. Hey, who are you calling shady? I'm calling you shady. You're a fucking klepto, you steal shit. And she's also like a fucking human garbage disposal. She likes to eat things. And this little girl is Pearl Fay, but I usually just call her Pearls. She's Maya's cousin and spirit medium in training herself. I know a, I know I'm a bit young, but I want to help in any way I can, Mr. Nick. Drain Village is the home of the mysterious Kirin channeling technique. And Maya here is the daughter of the Kirin School of Challenging, uh, Challenging, Channeling Masters. I know it sounds ridiculous, but it's no joke. I've seen her powers with my own eyes. It's the, it's the real thing, all right. Earth to Nick, how long are you gonna how long are you gonna make us two gorgeous women? Wow, how long are you gonna make two gorgeous women like us wait? Yeah, Mr. Nick, I can't wait any longer. I want to see the exhibit. <sighs> Looks like I don't get a choice here. Well, let's we'll head on out. All right. Let me see. October 11th, 7.18 p.m. Lordy Taylor, Maine Exhibit Hall. Lordy Taylor? 
the city's fanciest and most expensive department store. Let's see. There they are. Look at these. My older sister, an eternal mentor in life and law. Passed away two years ago. She has the same picture, right? But she's 19 now. <laughs> My sister, wait, she's 19 now. It said a year. Didn't, didn't it say back in her thing that she was 17? Uh, maybe, maybe the first one said 17, then the second one 18. Okay, cool. Pearl is nine! Hi, Pearl! My sister and disciple in curing tradition of spirit channeling. Maya's cousin and channeling prodigy. She has amazing, powerful spiritual abilities. I love this game. Treasure exhibit, huh? I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Oh, look at this place. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah, you can make even the cheapest junk look great. It all depends on how you display it. Oh, they even have the dusty old hanging scroll from, uh, <laughs> scroll, uh, wow, I can't even read. They even have the dusty old hanging scroll that was in Faye Manor's storeroom. Oh yeah, I remember scribbling on it when I was a little girl. On a family heirloom? Say Nick. The person in charge of this exhibit is waiting for us in the basement warehouse. Alright. I guess we should go and say hello. I want to examine things. Is this the one from the murder? <laughs> is this the one from the murder in the last game? I think I remember this old folding screen here. I'm pretty sure it was an important piece of evidence in the murder case that happened in Korean Village. Man, this folding screen is the greatest of all the spirit channeling secrets. The sixth law, uh, the sixth leaf curing sacred writing folding screen. If if it's so secret, why is it the most prominent thing in the exhibit? If this is an heirloom, do they plan on getting any of the shit back? Oh, Mystic uh, Mystic Maya's. Oh wow, my stomachs are hurting <laughs> for no reason. Mystic Maya, look, I can't believe it. Ah, it's so cute. It's a little diorama of the Curian village. Yeah, look at it. But somehow, it seems to reek of dreariness. Oh, Mystic Maya, it's your house. It even says Fae Manor on it. Yikes, you're right. I kind of want to add the famous in front of it. Don't do it, Maya. They might get mad. All right. What about these things? There's just a bunch of old urns. Are these really treasures, too? Of course they are! This is a treasure exhibit, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess so. So, all it takes is to be a treasure is age? No wonder nobody likes museums. <laughs> what about this? This is just a pillow. What's with the big cushion? Just lying around with nothing on it. Hmm. Well, it must be for the greatest treasure of all. Greatest treasure? Is there something like that? Huh? Why, of course there is. Right, Pearly? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, I bet it would really take your breath away. Probably be grandma's fucking ashes that Pearl fucked up in the last game. All right, time to move on. Basement. Now look at this place. Yep, this is a basement warehouse, all right. This place is scary. I feel like a monster could jump out any time. I feel like someone's gonna die here. Don't be scared, Pearly. I'll protect you. Oh, Mr. Wright. <laughs> a monster! You were right! Huh? A monster? Oh! My! God! Why are you here? I thought I would never... I thought I would never see you again. Gotta say... I am happy that she's here, though. I do kind of like her. <laughs> good evening. It's good to see you again. What was her name again? Fucking Avian? Or something like that? Not Avian. What was it? Uh... Mmm, it was like... I got Adrian. Adrian was her name, right? Adrian Andrews? Y you? I know you. <laughs> nice to see you again. <laughs> Little miss. Ah, oh, hello. 
Is she a friend of yours, Nick? And how did you know her, Pearly? Oh yeah, Maya, you weren't there because you got kidnapped. <laughs> I'm happy. I hope no one gets kidnapped again. I missed Maya that whole entire time. It's Andrews. Nice to meet you, Adrian. I'm Adrian Andrews. God damn it. I'm in charge of the I'm in charge of the promotion and planning for this treasure event. I'm also responsible for the security arrangements. Oh, um, nice to meet you. Adrian sure has changed since we last met. Isn't she like 5'2 or something, or like 5 foot, even though she looks like she would be like taller than that? <laughs> Head of planning, promo promotion, and security at Treasures. Damn. <laughs> Can't keep up with these characters coming back. Me either. I just remember her because she stuck out. So, this is the warehouse. The really valuable exhibit items are still stored away in here. Oh. My. God. I was kind of mad I couldn't do this. As. As Mia. But check it out. No great deal thanks to that badge. It's the only reason that I'm still here today. Oh, come on now. That's not true. I think what Nick means to say, it wasn't thanks to- It wasn't thanks to the badge, it was thanks to me! Tell the truth, Nick. I know that's what you're thinking. Maya, I'll fucking choke the life out of you. If you keep- If you keep fucking sullying my name. No way, Maya! Oh my god- Oh wait, can I actually look at that picture or is it just- Oh, it's this. Okay, cool. <laughs> Alright. So, what's up with you, Adrian? It's really, it really been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Wright? Nick, what's going on? Who is this woman? Are you jealous? Excuse me? You calm down. You, you sit there. Why are you freaking out on me? What? I just thought it'd be more dramatic if I got all worked up. See, there you go. There you go. That's the Maya Island. I know. Mystic Maya, you shouldn't let him off the hook that easily. Oh, yeah. I forgot Pearl's trying to ship us. Please, Maya, don't say anything. That need, that needles pearls for, uh, that needle pearl. Eh, can't read. That needle pearls further. Mr. Wright was there for me when I really needed help. It was something that happened seven months ago. You remember, don't you? The nickel samurai case. Not really. I was stuck in the dark wine cellar. Did that escape your memory, Nick? After that, I quit being a manager and started this job. Wow! You quit being a manager and became- I'm sorry, what was this again? Uh... Seems like you quit becoming a manager and became a manager. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> wow, that's tough. I'm sorry, Miss Andrews. If it wasn't for us. No, don't say that. I'm glad the whole thing happened. Thanks to you and everyone else that was involved, I was able to change my whole life. I really am grateful. Phew, that's a relief. Because I actually really like you. <laughs> I'm really impressed, Miss Andrews. Ha <clears throat> Handling a huge expedition like this must be very tiring. Well, Lordy Taylor is celebrating its 200th anniversary this year. The works on display is the main ex- is the main ex- hey, wow. In the main exhibi- exhibition- I can't say the word. Exhibition hall, worthy of the finest museums. Woo! Did you hear that, Pearly? The finest museums. Yes, I did. It really is awesome. So, this basement warehouse is pretty well protected, huh? Of course it is. After all, there's so there's some priceless treasures here. The security guards are all very highly trained as well. That sounds good. So what is uh so what is it with so what's with the face she's making? Yeah, something happened? Something gets stolen? Check this out. I want to do something nice for you and your friends, Mr. Wright. So that's why you arranged this exhibit? I knew that Kirain Village was the hometown of your assistant, Maya. I thought it would be great to let the rest of the world know about it, too. Hmm. That's not exactly thanking me, per se, is it? Maybe... But who would want to see an exhibition on the treasures of Mr. Phoenix Wright? I guess I can't argue with that one. Alright. 
Anything else? No? Am I gonna keep moving? It's kind of, I kind of feel bad just like getting up and walking away. <laughs> Let's check the area out. Let's see, what's this? This computer. Looks like it's hooked up to the security camera above. And that means what? The camera is set up to- Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. No. <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> she said, The security here is highly trained. We're gonna see Wendy again, aren't we? Yeah, that's gonna happen. Mmm, <laughs> that's happening. She's gonna appear again. Camera set up to take a photo of anyone that goes in or out of the storeroom. Then the data from the camera gets uploaded to the computer here. And that's what I see. That's some pretty high-tech stuff. What the hell's my dog doing? You okay over there, buddy? Good, just making sure. All right. See this camera. Security camera. It's trained on the warehouse door. They set up to take pictures of... Ugh, sorry, I had to yawn. It's set up to take pictures of anyone that enters or exits the door. An ounce of provision is worth a pound of cure, they say. Hmm. Hey, what are you doing? You're not doing anything bad over there, are you, dog? Sure. Hey. Making sure. He is making a lot of noise, and I can't really see what he's doing back there. Zero! Sit. Sit down, little buddy. Did your dog get spooked by mentioning the security lady? Nah, I gave him like a I gave him like a towel now, so he's not making as much noise as usual. But I'm just make I just want to make sure that he's not having any accidents, right? I want him to tell me when he has to go to the bathroom. Because he's, he's been having a little bit of accidents here and there. Uh, let's see. I don't, I don't think I should just up and walk away from Adrian. That feels kind of like a bad move to make, right? It feels kind of rude. What about this paint here? Looks like part of a big signboard. All I can read on it is the burr. Oh, what are you barking for? That's my other dog. What are you barking for? You okay? I didn't, I don't know what you're barking for. He's looking at me all weird. I got it. Maybe it's supposed to say hamburger. You sure it's not hamburg, Maya? Because in the la last couple of games, they never wrote it down as hamburger. They always put hamburg. Why would anyone write hamburger? That's big. Like, maybe for the War World Hamburger Festival or something? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> I got it. Maybe it says spaghetti. Why are you talking about food? Oh, wait. That's normal for you. <laughs> Anyways, it says burr. There's no way it could say spaghetti. Well, maybe it was a typo. It might have said spaghetti festival. What do you think? Okay, me. Besides, spaghetti is the only thing more tangled than your reasoning. Oh, shit. It's over here. Mr. Nick, what's the big door over there? It looks like the door to the actual storeroom. I see lots of big boxes and stuff back there. Really? Let's go in. I want to take a look. Oh, I'm sorry. Unauthorized personnel aren't allowed in there. Did you hear that, Nick? We're unauthorized personnel. Why are you telling me that? <laughs> Should I hear that? We're not special. All right, well. I guess that's it for you, Adrian. I'm sorry, I don't want to, like, just up and leave without saying anything, but I guess we're up and leaving without... Um, so what about this? Sorry, I can't be of any more help. All right, just making sure. Just making sure. <laughs> I had to stop myself there. I was like, can't just up and leave without... Wait a minute. <laughs> Hmm. I finally managed to put the events of seven months ago behind me. I really love the work that I'm doing now. Honestly, I owe it all to you, Mr. Wright. Oh, it was nothing. And to this little girl, too. Thank you for saying so. 
Aww. <laughs> I guess I wasn't much of help, huh? No, that's not true. You were all a big help to me. She shouldn't take it so personally. It's not like she was actually free to help. So, uh, what do you think about me? You certainly changed since I last saw you seven months ago. Really? Yes. You look like you bulked up a little. Well, now that you mentioned it, I guess I have gotten a little stronger. You're such a dork, Nick. <laughs> She's like, you're such a fucking loser. I'm sorry. I don't know many people as I used to. There really isn't anything I can tell you about that person. <laughs> Oops. All right. Cool. Is that it? You sure? You sure not hiding anything? All right. Just making sure. Make sure. All right. I'm just gonna up and skedaddle. I'm sorry. It feels kind of weird to do this. All right. I'm not sorry. I guess I gotta go back and talk to you. What are we doing? What did I miss this time? <laughs> what are we doing? The door? What about this? Nothing here? Nope. Hmm. That has check mark on it. Wasn't there like a button I can press to help me like look for shit? Oh! The slide. Yeah. That was a... That's a thing that exists. <laughs> Alright. Huh. Organ. Organization, I guess? What the hell is this thing? Mystic Maya, take a look at the door. That's Mystic Ami, right? Yes, that's the statue of the woman who invited the curing channeling... Invited? My bad. Invented the curing channeling technique, Ami Fei. This statue is on loan from one of the training halls of the Fei branch family. In fact, it just arrived this morning. Ooh. What's that creepy looking thing she's holding? Don't ask me. How should I know? How you do... Huh? <laughs> well... You are the future master, right? Maybe so, but this thing's the first time I've ever seen a statue. That thing is the curing sun. Oh my god, I can't even say this word. Let me try this. Shichi uh, Shichi Shito? Shichi Shito? Can't say it. Shichi Shito. I can't say it. Oh my fucking god, kill me. It's a ceremonial sword. It's not a real weapon, so the blade isn't sharp. Aww, I like dangerous things. I want to cut something. <laughs> what are you eyeing me for? Oh, look, it's already 8 o'clock. Have you all eaten yet? Well, actually, I've already made my... I already made a reservation at the restaurant on the 12th floor. Can't help you with that word. I don't know either. Why don't we all dine together? Ooh, I like the sound of that. Dine? It's so fancy. I'll have the kids' lunch. <laughs> Pearly, it's dinner, not lunch. Why don't you go for it and really eat your fill with the kids' dinner? Okay, in that case, one kids' dinner for me. <laughs> Shall we head upstairs then? After the pleasant evening, all that remains was to wait for the ex. God, I can't see the word. Exhibition to open. Exhibition? Exib yeah, it is exhibition. That's how you say that, right? <laughs> That's not a different word. It was one. It was wonderful seeing Miss Andrews looking so happy. None of us would have imagined that the very next day something terrible would happen. Mother, fucker. Who dead? Who died? October 12, 10:09 a.m. Right in Koloffs. Nick, this is terrible. What the? You're cleaning the toilet again? I never knew you were such a toilet freak. Give me a break, would you? My brain just hit the snooze button for the fifth time. Um, I'm gonna turn on the TV. Why she sound so determined about that? She said, I'm gonna turn on the TV and you're not gonna stop me. We've got an update on the recent treasure heist. Based on clues at the scene of the crime, authorities have announced that they believe it was the work of the renowned phantom thief, Mask Demask. Ma mask the mask? According to the... According... <laughs> Alright. 
According to the spokesperson, Lori Taylor received a threat letter, uh, threat letter some days ago. This is the fifth heist by the Phantom Thief, who only targets rare treasures. Lordy Taylor. Well, Nick, what are you gonna do? Don't you dare go back to scrubbing the toilet. Treasure, Lordy Taylor? You don't think... Yes, now get up, Nick. It was stolen by Mask to Mask. Ugh. Our most valuable treasure. The curing sacred urn was stolen. So valuable that we put it back together with duct tape and glue. What? Alright, alright. Refresh my memory a little. What is the sacred urn? So the most important treasure in Kirin Village, that's all. Look, it's right there on the poster. Mmm. Don't you remember what's inside? The urn contains a very important soul. Namely the soul of mystic Ami Fei, the founder of the Kirin channeling technique. Right, Pearly. Oh yeah, that's right. Hold up. I thought the urn had the name Ami written on it. Now it says I am. Hmm. Any idea how that happened, Pearly? <laughs> huh? I, uh, well, uh, <laughs> there's some things best left unsolved, wouldn't you say, Mr. Nick? That's right. She desecrated her great-great-great-grandmother's ashes. One year ago, there was a murder in Kirin Village, my hometown. The sacred urn, it turned out to be an important clue in this case. Oh, I got a clue from that. Cool. Oh, I was terrible. I was arrested in everything. One year ago, the murder in Kirin Village. A man was killed during one of Maya's spirit channelings. And this urn would up... This urn would up... Wow. <clears throat> this urn wound up being the key evidence that proved her innocence. Mr. Nick? Would you mind not telling Mystic Maya about that? You promised, remember? You said you wouldn't tell anyone I broke the urn. Oh yeah, that's right. Now I remember this urn used to say Ami on it. Oh, she's so sad. I'm sorry, Pearl. Until Pearl's incident and pro accidentally broke it into a million pieces. She tried to secretly fix it. Let's just say it didn't work out so well. Sorry, I'm not so good at arts and crafts filling either. Anyways, this is how her glue project turned out. She put the pieces together wrong, and now instead of Ami, it says I am. And she, al she also desecrated her great-grandmother's ashes. Listen, it's all part of... See, everyone wants to know why Propatine became so evil, right? You know how the rule of two with Sith? Your si a Sith must kill the other Sith? She had to get rid of the ashes. She says she's too powerful. She talks to me. I can't believe people... I can't believe no one noticed this until now. A whole year ago! I can't believe it myself. Alright. Hey, Maya. Check this out. I can't show her it. No! Damn it. You win. Oh, wait, hold up. I gotta present. There you go. Ah, oh, damn it. So, what do you think about this? Hmm, what about it, Pearly? I'm not certain. What do you think, Mr. Nick? Maybe three heads aren't better than one. <laughs> it's my badge. The origins of Propertine, exactly. She said she's too powerful, <laughs> even in death. The only Sith to become a fucking Force Ghost. <laughs> Alright. Team, let's move out. October 12, Lord Taylor, uh, Lordy Taylor, Main Exhibition Hall. Right, let's see if we can find some clues that might lead us to the bad guy. But it doesn't look like anything has been disturbed. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same as it did last night. Hmm, bad guy, huh? Hey, you can't poke around here, pal. Wait a minute, that voice. Oh no, not him again. It's you. 
Now I'm the one who should be saying not again. Why is it that every time something bad happens, you all show up, pal? I should be asking you that. Aren't there any other detectives? No, I should be asking you that. What are you doing here hanging around? Hey, actually first, why are you here? All right. All right, all right, we get it. <laughs> why don't you two kiss and make up already? She's like, oh my god, why don't you two just fuck each other already? Shut up in my ear all the damn time. <laughs> I'm tired of you people. Um, hello. It's been a long time, Mr. Scruffy Detective. Oh, it's you, little missy. Uh, oh. Actually, my name's Gumshoe. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Now, <laughs> now's a good chance for you to try and remember that. And if it's too long for you, you can call him Dick. Okay, it's good to see you again, Mr. Detective Dick. Oh, yeah. Good to see you again, too, I guess. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at this man. 32. Homicide detective at the local precinct in charge of the initial investigations. Good old Gumshoe. How's it hanging, Gumshoe? Wait a minute. Here. Take a look at my attorney's badge. You still showing that cheap little thing off? A real man keeps his mouth shut and carries a suave police badge, pal. <laughs> All right. Well, anyways, detective, I'm here because of this. To be honest, pal, there's something that bugs me. What's that? All the other items that were stolen by Masty Mass were ones even that I've heard of. They were all world famous treasures. The tier of of Ememon, I can't even say that word, Ememon, or the Crow, Crow? The Crown of Bongora. The Sacred Urn of Curane is famous too, right, Pearly? Of course, everyone in Curane Village knows about it. Sounds like we got an unpre unpredictable thief on our hands. Okay, so what happened? Mr. Detective did. Can you tell us what happened? Oh, you're trying to remember my name. Atta girl. Just, it's Gumshoe, okay? Anyways, the thief stole something called the Sacred Urn. I know about that. Why'd she get so serious? She said, I know about that. That's where I got my powers. <laughs> like, what? Oh, well, the criminal's name is Mask the Mask. I know that too. Detective, can you tell us something other than that? Well, I guess I sort of kind of owe you guys in a way. The crime occurred last night at around 1.30 in the morning. How exactly do you know that? And we got an emergency phone call from a guard at the scene of the crime. He said the urn was just stolen. The scene of the crime? You mean here, right? Wrong. The urn was being kept under careful guard in the basement warehouse. Basement warehouse, huh? Um, so who was guarding the basement warehouse? That guy, it's all his fault that the thief got away, pal. He solves one case and gets a swole head, thinking thinking that he's an ace detective. Huh? A ace detective? Who the fuck are you talking about? So, why do you call him an ace detective, anyways? That's what he calls himself, pal. I didn't make it up. So... What's he like? Well, like I told you, Master Maz has made five heists so far. On the fourth heist, Mr. Ace Detective managed to get the stolen treasure back. Wow, that's impressive. All by himself? Yep, I gotta admit it, pal. Maybe he really is as good as he says. Every time the thief sends one of his calling cards, we send our men on a stakeout. But none of us has ever gotten so much a glimpse of the guy. But Mr. Ace Detective was able to retrieve the stolen treasure from the thief? Anyways, he's at the scene of the crime right now, looking for clues. So he's down in the basement warehouse, huh? Alright. Hey, Detective Gumshoe, about Mask the Mask. Is he famous? What? You're joking, right, Nick? Mask the Mask is the hottest thing since sliced bread. I swear to God, you say this every game, Maya. Uh, Max Samurai is uh, the Silver Samurai. Is uh, the pretty prank princess. Is the coolest thing since bread. Something has appeared as 
Sometimes he appears as a museum, a, mu uh, a museum guard. Sometimes he appears as a big brown bear known to surprise unsuspecting victims. But underneath those disguises is the true master mask. So he's some kind of master of disguise? And he only goes after the world's finest art, pal. Last night was his fifth heist. If Lord Taylor had only cooperated, I could have had caught him in this time. What? Then you knew he was planning on stealing the sacred urn? Of course I did. The guy always sends his calling card before he steals something. Calling card, huh? They mentioned that on TV. So, what's this calling card? Here it is. But don't show it to anyone. It's top secret, okay, pal? What's this mark on the front? That's masked mass signature emblem, pal. You could say it's his mark. All of his calling cards have got the same on them. They didn't mention that in the newsflash. We're withholding the details from the public for operational reasons. The only way we the only way we can tell if a calling card is real or not is by this emblem. Alright. That makes sense. When you get famous, there's always Im imitators. Mr. Nick, if you work a little harder, maybe you can have your own copycat someday. Um, thanks, I guess. Alright. Guess I'm headed downstairs. Thanks for the help, gumshoe. Time to meet this ace detective. October 12, Lord Taylor, basement warehouse. Oh, the sword's broken! No matter how many times we come here, this place always gives me the chills. It's probably because it's air-conditioned to protect the art pieces, you know? Welcome to my private little banquet of chaos. Huh? What the heck does that mean? Who in the fuck? <laughs> I have no idea. I want to give him a voice. I want him, I want him, to sound, I want him to sound like Waluigi or some shit. I don't know. Right now, I have nothing for this guy. I'm afraid I have a little, I have very little offer, but please, make yourself at home. Uh, who are you anyways? Shh, silence. What the fuck? <laughs> now I see, it's all becoming clear. What do you see? Z what? Zaveri? Huh? Zaveri, the truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. A lawyer and a spirit medium, neither very advanced at their trade. Am I wrong? Yikes, that's scary. How'd you know that? Huh, how you say? The universal skeptic would say that how- wait, what? The universal skeptic would say that how is nothing but a question of why. I am a traveler of both time and space, and a swimmer of dreams. What is he- what is he talking about? Can't make heads or tails of it. Without further ado, let me fulfill what should be first duty of a gentleman and introduce my name. The name is at at me at what at me like at me like Luke at me that mm, okay look at me gotcha gotcha all right nice I still don't know why the other dude's name was swallow what was that about? <laughs> All right? Ace Detective! Oh, um, hi! Don't let him in- don't, don't let him intimidate you, Nick! Stand up and show him what you made of! Um, the name's Wright. Phoenix Wright. Ace Attorney. I'm Maya Fay, Ace Spirit Medium. And I'm, uh, Pearl Fay. I'm Mystic Maya's cousin. And, um, Spirit Medium, Ace Apprentice. Excellent! I love these guys already. I love all of them. I love them. Well then, shall we begin our little game? Game? What does the phrase one short of Baker's- One short of a Baker doesn't come to mind with this guy. First of all, check this shit out. I'm sorry, I cannot be more helpful. But I have no interest uh, save that of finding evidence Wait, what? Evidence against my arch-rival. Nah, it's okay, Nick. Nick is just a bit of a pit- a bit of a piddling evidence hog. That's his defense style. A piddling evidence hog? You say? In that case, I simply- <laughs> I'm simply wasting my breath. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks, Maya. Why couldn't you have said I was a rival and not a piddling evidence hog? All right. <laughs> uh, I have a small idea regarding Doug Swallow's name. Oh, really? Do share with the class. Because I'm confused as shit on that. Let me see, what do we have for this guy? Oh my god. A flashy thief who steals valuable works of art. Send a calling card for the heist. An ace detective has great powers of deduction, yet fairly makes sense. Alright, guess I'll save this up here. Alright. I think... Now is a good stopping point for this, mainly because we're like five minutes away from an hour. So we've been doing this for about four hours. Not fully four hours, because I started a bit late. But this is a great stopping point for now, I think. And I can't wait to come back to this, trust me. Uh, let me see, what day is it? Okay, so next stream, right? We're going to head into Sly Cooper, and we might just transition to playing more of this, because I'm i not sure, uh, but we might be able, we're probably going to finish Sly Cooper, like, the next time we stream it, so, that's probably, it'll probably take, like, maybe an hour and 30 to, like, beat that game, and if I think we have enough time, we'll probably come back to this, if not, we'll play something else, maybe some more Rune Factory or something, I'm not sure, but... This is a great stopping point for this. And honestly, I gotta use the bathroom. I said at the beginning of the stream, kind of been holding that off a little bit. <laughs> My stomach is killing me. So, this is why this is why you shouldn't eat late dinners. So, that's it for now, right? <laughs> Do tell me, real quick, tell me what the idea was regarding the name for Doug Swallow, because I actually really do want to know. <laughs> Connecting to chat. Oh my fucking god. What's going on here? No, 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 no. Come on. Come on, Twitch. What are you doing? Oh, man, Twitch. What are you doing? Do I have to fucking refresh the page? I don't want to refresh the page. Come on. My chat just fucking stopped and died on me. That was amazing. That was fucking fantastic. <laughs> well. Oh, there we go. Chat's back for me now. Alright. Well. <sighs> this is the stopping point. So, I want to say thank you for everybody who came and watched live. Right? For those who are watching the VODs, I thank you very much. I uh, hope to see you live. For those on YouTube, consider watching this live, right? If you can. If you can't, that's fine too. Just keep doing what you're doing. And that's pretty much it. I said what I plan I said what my plan was for the next stream. And let's leave that at that. So as always, I wanna say thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy. And take care. I'm a chef, chef to